welcome back, my fair viewers and friends, to the Shadowverse NGE, NGE Shadowverse Open. That's Good. right, we're in week five and we're live here from the studios in Burbank, California, ready for another tournament. Mm -hmm. Hey, before we get rolling, there's a cool update, a cool uh, little change that we're making here. Uh, listen to a lot of feedback, and of course we're looking to make more changes in the future as the season wraps up and as well as kind of the tournament progresses. Uh, but we'd just like everybody watching to know that the NGE Shadowverse Open from next week forward will be pushing back a little bit. Uh, we'll be pushing an, an hour back, so the tournament will start at 3 p.m. as opposed to 2, and the broadcast will start at 5 p.m. as opposed to 4. So hopefully that'll just be a little bit more comfortable we're continuing to look at feedback and continuing to look at, at responses, and we're still thinking uh, there's lots of things that could that could uh, be fixed up and tuned and changed, but all with time. Just would just love for you guys to know that. And with that, uh, that's the announcement. So, NGE Shadowverse Open. We're in the open play phase. Mm -hmm. where it's open registration to all players, and they're going to sign up and compete in the single elimination conquest format tournaments to find the one first place victor who will then be given a direct invite to the 16 player invitational. Now, there can only be 10 direct invites. The other six players are going to be risen from the leaderboard. As these players have been competing in the Shadowverse Open, they've been being awarded points. And those who are not already invited to the playoffs have a chance to be invited in based on their points earnings. So, continuous participation may earn you a spot in the playoffs, and at the end of that whole thing, the top eight get a cash prize of out of a $10,000 prize pool. That's right, first place is gonna go home with $4,000, and the remaining $6,000 is gonna be split among second through eighth place. Mm -hmm. But of course, that's not the only people who get prized. This particular tournament is also prized as well. 30,000 vials to the first place winner, of course, the direct invite to the playoffs. 10,000 vials to second place. Third and fourth get 5,000 each. And then everybody who participates gets the NGE emblem. And always, the flare is something that, that is also given to tournament winners. The weekly champion will receive a flare, as well as the top points earner. So that leaderboard comes back again. If you're the top points earner on that leaderboard, you get the MVP flare. And then the grand champion flare is given to the winner of the playoffs. So lots of awards, lots of prizes to be given out. Let's take a look at what we have today, uh, who the competitors are, and who's made it through to the round of eight. And we can look forward to Noah, a repeat. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's the highest points earned that we have in the tournament so far. Uh, he's sitting at 260 points, 200 from the win, of course, mm -hmm. last week. Man, yeah, really looking forward to see how far he's going to go. Against another very popular Shadow Nexus, who we just had ISM mm -hmm. uh very, very kindly taking time out of his day to join us in the pre-show. Uh, his uh, fellow uh, teammate, Lux, is there against Noah in the first round. And then we've got Unlucker and Pop Washer from Crimson Fencers making it back. One of the big names in the first tournament that we That's ever right. ran. That's right, Potwasher, Stoltz, Noir, all players we've seen before. Thanks for coming out again. And, of course, we've got some new faces. Mm -hmm. Really interested to see how these new players are gonna fare. And it's great to see some of these players here from watching some of the community tournaments on the weekend. Nor is a big name that sticks out, very active in the competitive scene. So I'm Absolutely. excited to see how far Nor can make it. But a lot of exciting matches to get into today. And uh, you know what? As per our pre-show, I'm hoping I have the notepad right here. If you watch the pre-show, you know what he's talking about. I'm hoping that we can break the curse. It can, it, we need to show it limited times on camera because on the one hand, we need to put awareness out there, but on right. the other hand... We don't want to jinx it or anything. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exposed, extended durations of time viewing the cursed notepad will, will harm your health. It's like, so. it's like radiation. You don't want to be exposed to it for too long. Absolutely. And we care about your health and your safety. Yeah. It's okay. We're, we will take the brunt of the damage for you guys. Yes. That's, that's what's going to happen. So, yeah. I, uh, you know, if you want to participate in the Shadowverse Open and do your part in defeating the curse... <clears throat> Make sure you go to our website, shadowverse.nge.io, where you can find information about tournaments, about the rule set, about the broadcast, about the schedule, with the updated times, of course. And if you want to talk about it, make sure you go to social media, at WatchNGE. Sterling and I are there, watching your responses, looking, waiting to reply, but I think mostly we're a little bit lurky, but... We do our best. We Brooding do our Brooding and lurky. That's, yeah. that's how Rady and I are on a, on a weekly basis. Of course, the tournament competitors 
need not be the only winners of the day. We have giveaways, so make sure you check out the Twitch panels below. Follow at WatchNGE on Twitter for a chance to win 3,500 vials. Get more information in the panels. Definitely go. 3,500 vials is a legendary card. So you could build yourself a nice little, uh, you know, card of your choice out of these decks that you see in the tournament. You too can take one step in the path to becoming a tournament victor. So uh -huh. in just a bit, we'll be heading into Noah vs. Lux. I'm excited. Yeah, really excited. We talked a bit about uh, how Havencraft is a deck that we want to see more of. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely the curse deck, we think. But uh, we know that Noah has got an absolutely stellar sword and shadow deck. We'll see what decks he's bringing to the tournament this time. <gasps> it's M. Bison! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's M. Bison! Wow. What a pro. I love it. Who is, of course, in, in the stead of the Shadowcraft leader. So uh, Right, 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 right. And Bison will be be the replacement there, and uh, how appropriate he's got all this. Well, technically, M Bison is like psycho energy. You know what I mean? Okay. He's okay. not necessarily well. He's kind of evil, so that's dark. It's dark so. and, and shadow like, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. But uh, I like it. I I want to see more of these Street Fighter leaders. I'm I'm sure I'm Bison. certain we will. We'll see a lot of M Bison yeah. in the coming games. I'm eager to hear his voice line. All right, let's take a look at some of this. No no one drop for Lux, and uh, Noah's going to be in a similar position. But of course, as with most Shadow uh, Craft games, mm -hmm. going first is a huge boon, especially with the card that was just played. Soul Squasher is super good at taking Temple back against Evolve. But players. with going first, the, the huge advantage you get from that is you get the first follower on the board, and that's especially important for Shadow Craft. But uh, that advantage is as, for going first has been kind of... Um, is, is gone for Lux. He doesn't oh, have that wow. advantage. Um, of, of course, neither player had a one drop, mm -hmm. but now Noah has got the advantage of having the three uh, Evolve Orbs. Mm -hmm. The decision there for Noah was to use a zombie party. Uh, really did not want any kind of board presence on turn three. Mm -hmm. Forces Lux to play the Unica rather than the Catacomb. Um, but similarly, Noah also does not have any followers on board, so I think it kind of just extended that time. Mm -hmm. Because both players neither had a one drop, and they both have been f so focused on clearing the boards. Um, Prince Catacomb is, is not a card that we saw on turn three at all. Mm -hmm. And that and that's Catacomb. It, it's, it's one of the huge reasons why Shadow is so potent right now and so strong. Mm -hmm. Ooh, double Unica with the Shadow Reaper. There's a lot of opportunities here to do damage to face. And yep. I, getting board control is going to be hard to argue with the Shadow Reaper out there right now, especially in camouflage. Oh, but the Lariel coming. That's right. It's it, having those Unicas is huge. They they almost act like wards, because I mean, with the sergeant on the field, you can't attack for face. He's, he's going to heal for four. Mm -hmm. Lux is going to heal for four on his next turn. So you almost have to destroy the Unicas, and that of course is just going to be mm -hmm. buffing up the Reaper. I think he he might be able to just ping it out with Lyriel. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh no, I'm not to do that. He's going to play the little soul squasher here. There's Lyriel. Interesting. Interesting that he chose the pink face. Hmm. Well, I mean, he couldn't have pinged, pinged the Reaper. It's still oh, got yeah, the ambush. Oh, yeah, it's got the ambush. Right. right. It's, a, it's a direct target. And now the ambush is gone on the Reaper with this draw. The Goblin from Lux. We'll see what the turn is going to be. He's got Cerberus in hand. Um, looks like he's going to catacomb with the three board. I like that a lot. This is really strong right now. Having the Shadow Reaper there, especially with all the skeletons that Catacomb can, can generate, mm -hmm. and you can still even trade into all of these cards to continue buffing up that Shadow Reaper. The big thing about it is the Shadow Reaper both gets attack and defense, making it harder and harder to remove the longer right. the longer it stays on board. Already at a 4-4 now. And there's a Lurching Corpse in the hand of Noah. We'll see how he's able to utilize that card's ability to, to clear off the board. He, with so many followers on the board for Lux, he might have to go just for a lucky shot and hoping that it destroys the Reaper. He does have Soul Conversion, um, so that's going to be a great three play. He's going to evolve Cerberus and take it out, leaving Cerberus at 5-1. That should be very easily removable by way of Skeleton. Mm -hmm. And so the situation, I think, is, is pretty good in favor of Lux going first, really giving him that advantage Enabling, enabling him to play the Shadow Reaper to really protect himself from any kind of efficient board clear. Yeah, that's right. He was able to clear the board this turn and also do a lot of damage this face. He's electing to just go for that one damage to face 
instead of killing off the Cerberus. Mm -hmm. We'll see if Noah is able to take advantage of that uh, in this coming turn. Takes down the Goblin. The Soul Squasher well, typically is a good way to gain tempo back, and with both Evolution Orbs spent on the side of Lux, Noah is really looking to turn this game around. That's right, and there's a Soul Squasher in the hand of Lux, but all the followers on Lux's side of the field, um, Noah was able to get rid of all the ones that uh, were able to summon Skeleton. Mm -hmm. And then he just played his cat a Catacomb of his own. Mm -hmm. So a massive advantage going over um, to Noah on this turn. Really looking seemingly to board clear. Mm -hmm. That's right. Does not want to risk the chance of another Catacomb coming out next turn. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the shadow count here, it's very heavily in favor of Lux. If an Ector just shows up, that could mean real bad news. Certainly wipe the board, possibly some face damage as well. But Lux has been able to get a massive advantage in the health points. He's got 19. Noah is has been sitting on 10. That's a lot of pressure that Lux has been able to gain. And the last evolution orb was spent on Noah's end as well and was not really able to take a confident kind of seat in the board control position. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to throw in a few more skeletons here. And this turn, he can clear the board and get Death's Breath with the enhanced uh, warded zombies. Mm -hmm. There it is. He's going to go for face. He's going to leave his board full. Um, I think that's a, that's a great decision in this instance. But there's still uh, two Cocos and a Mimi in the hand of Lux. We'll see how he's able to use those this I think, turn. I think these cards are really important right now for, for Lux, especially because there's so many zombies on the field, and he doesn't really have any heavy-hitting cards in his hand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gonna have to pass, and that's leaving a lot of damage. Oh, oh, and there's the actor. That's gonna. But he doesn't have a ton of shadows. But he's got the followers on his board. I mean, he's, he can get a massive chunk of base yes. damage this turn. It's definitely a good card to have in hand. He could play Ector and Soul Conversion, uh, the Catacomb, get another skeleton after the turn's over, and draw more cards. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be able to get so much more options. Mm hmm. Leaving that amount of board control, and it was a tough spot, right, for Lux, because he, he only had the Lyrial and the Bone Skeleton. Meanwhile, there were three 2-3 three wards. Mm -hmm. There it is. Hector comes down. There's a damage buff. So much damage to face, and that instantly just catches up the situation now. Absolutely. Immediately turning the game in favor of Noah by a pretty significant margin. Mm -hmm. Doesn't opt to use the Soul Conversion. Just going to wait on it. Oh. Hmm. He has a lot of two damage pings. He can throw his Bone Chimera into one of the wards. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think there was enough in in hand for Luxie to, to handle that situation. No, without an evolution orb mm -hmm. in his hand, there wasn't really anything that he could have done to to gain back the pressure with that turn. There was so much, and really, the only big card that Lux drew into in that game was the Catacomb Shadow Reaper combo. And that's only one part of it all. Right. In this kind of scenario, when you're up against another Shadowcraft deck, board control is not a given. In most matchups, board control for Shadow comes easily, right? And that's why those cards can be so strong. Cerberus, very strong card if you have a lot of cheap units on the board that you can buff up or you can ping for two damage to get that extra reach. That just wasn't the case for Lux, so even though he had such a huge advantage going forward, he needs something more heavy hitting. Ector would have been really great. Mm -hmm. Instead, mm -hmm. Noah was the one that received Ector and, and, and just rocketed ahead. The second turn <laughs> off the Ector just wanted. And this Shadowcraft deck is going to be gone for Noah. He's going to be switching over to a Swordcraft deck. We'll see how it stacks up against Lux uh, Shadowcraft deck mm -hmm. that he elected to stay with this turn. And I like this turn from Noah. He's got Whole Soul Swing, such a great card uh, in the early stages of the game uh, for Swordcraft, being able to get rid of the Sergeant if it comes out, or if you play the Soul Squasher for tempo. Mm -hmm. You choose to put Lancer down rather than draw for a commander. Mm -hmm. And now Noah's going to be able to Whole Soul Swing or maybe a uh, Novice Trooper if he just wants to go for full face damage. Mm -hmm. I think that might be the choice here. Of course, leaving any kind of board control on turn three is dangerous for, for mm -hmm. this very reason Boy, here. Right. Inside. And he's got two Bone Chimeras and another Catacomb, and that is a deadly combo, that especially is... against Sword. That I... could spell the end for Noah. We'll see how he chooses to deal with it. He does manage to get rid of one of the followers, so there's only a Catacomb that's going to summon one Skeleton now. The big difficulty, as always, in this situation is once this Evolve starts kicking in and Lux starts trading out cards as such, mm -hmm. 
How do you gain back board control as Swordcraft? You really need to find a lot of value. I like how Noah has saved his ward, because that might be instrumental in this kind of mid-stage of the game before Hector. Mm -hmm. Right, especially when all the skeletons only have one attack. A Grimnir can block the attack from three skeletons. Absolutely mm -hmm. crucial. Of course, seeing that Hector is in hand, there is a very, very dangerous moment for uh, Noah coming up in the future here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as soon as he draw that, I just went, ooh, my spine just shuddered. Definitely going to be seeing that on turn seven, I hope. We'll see what Noah decides to evolve, what, whether it's the Mage or the Luminous Knight uh, in this scenario. Mm -hmm. Either way, it's it's going to be tricky. Um, he's only going to be, he's still going to have two, if he, if he clears uh, the Catacomb and the Skeleton, they're both just going to summon a Skeleton. Mm -hmm. I think, I think you have to face your fears, right? You just have to, to go in and clear. Mm -hmm. The good part is you have two Luminous Mages that's going to give you two free Evolve Orbs, mm -hmm. and so you should really be spending it. It's going to be the Knight. I think he's mm. he's trying to force the, the clear on the uh, Luminous Mage on the next turn. Right, um, leaving leaving the Mage with three health. Yeah. Oh, wow, he actually goes for face with the other. Mm. Maybe just trying to stay ahead of the numbers game, get him into that range where he can just swing for lethal rather than having to defend an impossible game. Right, on turn control. nine with the Evolved Albert. He does have two Fangblade Slayers in hand. We'll see if those um, get used. There it is. Just one skeleton to, to vouch for Lux here. Turn 5 Cerberus. Very popular move. And now there's a ton of tools in the hand of Lux. As opposed to last game, there's just so much going for him. He's got Bone Chimeras. He's got mm -hmm. board control right now. He's got the Ector waiting. He's got Coco and Mimi in the sidelines as well to further extend his reach. And there's not a great... Um, Six or play here from Noah. He, he's going to be able to Luminous Mage, um, clear clear off one of the followers. He has one turn left to make a serious play right now. Right. And then he needs some very, very big cards to, to draw to help him survive that turn seven. On A, he's got Fangblade, but even then, that's not necessarily the ideal card to fix the situation because Fangblade Slayer is only good at taking down one card at a time. Right, right. Which is a classic problem for Swordcraft and why I feel like this matchup is extremely difficult. That Orthrus. Yeah, really great draw from Lux. We'll see um, if he chooses to play at this turn. He could Orthrus, Coco, and Mimi do a lot of face damage. Um, Orthrus will be able to clear off one of the followers, mm. for sure. Um, we'll see if he decides to trade the skeleton into the, the mage um, so that to guarantee that Orthrus would kill um, the knight. He's going to play the Bone Chimera. I think his goal is to try to get into a situation where he can stock up a ton of shadows. Just play a bunch of cards that you can expend. Each Coco and Mimi. Good use of the Evolve, both removes the uh, Knight there and mm -hmm. puts three damage on the board waiting to happen. And, and Noah's got Maid response. Leader in hand, so he, he, and he's got seven orbs, so he could Maid Leader either get Albert or the Mage, and then uh, just make that his turn. Mm -hmm. There it is, it's gonna be Albert, but will he spend or will he use Geno? Hmm. Both Albert and Jeno would clear the board. Uh, Jeno could be traded into the skeleton. Both of them would die. Um, and that would certainly get rid of one of the followers. Um, Albert could go for face damage. I, that's such a risky play. I think that would end the game for Noah if he went for face damage. Uh, because Hector is in the hand of Lux. Yeah. What would that total be? 12, 13 damage to face? He doesn't have the Evolve Orb, but he doesn't have Coco Mimi. But he has Orthrus as well, but he could play both. He right. would. It would be real close. Right, right, right. <clears throat> I think the Evolve here is definitely the option. Yeah, keeping Albert alive with uh, with two health. Um, yeah. Putting Lux in a, in a spot where he has to make a difficult decision. You want to get rid of that that Albert, or or not? And he's gonna he's gonna spread the evolution orbs across, giving the mate leader three attack mm -hmm. as well. Trade out with a five damage there, mitigating a lot. Where's the storm gonna go? If it goes on to, it's going to go to the the skull beast. If it went on to the uh, the chimera, I mean that just would have given two skeletons and mm -hmm. and then the um, the enhanced ability, the enhanced attack points from Ector would have been absolutely devastating. Still, yeah. the the zombies with four attack is a perfect target for that Albert, and that's another five damage to face mm -hmm. and a massive board that now Noah has to chew through. Yep. Two, two, five, three in terms of damage. 
He does have the Fangblade Slayer, but there's another Ector in the hand of Lux. I think Lux is going to be able to take this. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think there's re really a way. Really, you're looking to clear out. The value for Shadowcraft is in the amount of followers it, have, mm -hmm. it has on the board, not necessarily the strength of the followers right. it has on board. So Fangblade Slayer being a single target removal kind of card mm -hmm. is not going to... This is essentially six plus damage off the Ector coming in yeah, just because absolutely. of the fact that three cards are available to swing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There it is. Ector on each side taking the win. Definitely. And we'll be going into game three here between Lux and Noah. What is Lux's alternate deck is a question. It could be a sword. I mean, that, that'd be highly likely. Sword Shadow was incredibly popular last week. Just Very for whatever mix. reason. Yeah. Almost everybody in the round of eight, three out of four of the semifinals mm -hmm. using Sword Shadow. But we know that Noah is going to be on his sword deck. What deck do you think, what composition do you think it would be great against that? Mm -hmm. That's the you question. Know, I feel like it's it's got its best situation of Shadow against Sword, right? Right. So it's in incredibly likely that Sword is just going to take this next game. The question is, in this scenario, it really seems like people have, I don't know if lost faith is the correct word, but have certainly favored less Dragoncraft, and it looks like it's going to be Dragoncraft in the form mm -hmm. of Ryu. You must die. Ryu, showing his face in the tournament for the first time. Yeah, he's always looking to get stronger, right, by fighting the strongest opponents. That's his thing. Hmm. A little bit, a little bit crazy, you know, yeah. that mentality. I certainly not um, very friendly. Yeah, it's kind of blood hungry. It, it very much is. Yeah, yeah. So uh, barbaric. <laughs> I will pay you money to never speak like that again. <gasps> oh, really? No, I, I, I'm not. It's great. Take it. Please, yeah, it's not. But we we see Mushusu as um, a really popular drop. We've seen it before. Um, players electing to have yeah. that two drop Ooh. instead of um, Unica, is, for example. Uh, certainly is gearing up for Storm. We've got an animated Forte. Animated of course, Forte. Genesis Dragon yeah. in hand, so we kind of know what the game plan here mm -hmm. is. You uh, ramp up and you just start trying to swing face as much as you can. Mofu actually talked in great detail about kind of the merging of these decks and, and kind of the little differences, the player personalities that show up because mm -hmm. The Dragoncraft deck is so is made so efficient with the existence of Sahakwil mm -hmm. um, that players can play these different styles of Storm Dragon or, or maybe something that's more focused on playing Ouroboros or even having a mix of the two, right? Mm -hmm. Or using even Imperial Dragoon that we saw in the NG Shadowverse Open. Right. A lot of interesting choices. Dark Angel Olivia, one of them as well. Mm -hmm. And Mushusu in this deck. Mm -hmm. um, it, it can gain a lot of pressure when your opponent, when you have it on the field and your opponent wants to evolve, just giving a oh, lot wow. of attack he points. The free ramp. He's going to be, he could straight Forte evolve this turn. He doesn't have overflow, so uh, Forte would be vulnerable to an attack from... Um, he uh, has he, a bunch of great, right. great choices. Yeah, he could well, he though. could ramp again, get Mushusu yeah. on the field, because the evolve orbs are going to be coming up again for Noah next turn. For the enhanced... Oh, wow. Hey, that was only possible because he ramped him. Yep, right. absolutely. Being able to clear off both those followers and emptying the board. Still um, giving Noah kind of a free turn here. He doesn't have Albert in the hand, which would have uh, been really great to see just an evolved Albert on this turn basically for free. Mm -hmm. um, but there are um, mages and Tsubaki in the hand. It's a big awkward thing here is you play the Luminous Mage, you probably just evolve the Mage here, mm -hmm. but there's nowhere to spend the Rush effect, and almost all the cards that Noah has in hand are resources that are very valuable, just not in this current situation right. necessarily. And, and there could have been another Breath of the Salamander in the hand of Lux, being able to clear off the board again. Here comes the uh, Overflow Forte. Nice and evolved with three defense, whole salt swings, not going to be able to take it out. But, um... The Tsubaki, of course, is going to be able to take that out next turn as well. Yes, Blazing Breath, remove the Knight. It's very important to mitigate damage on yourself. You aren't quite at the turn where you grab Genesis Dragon yet. You don't know when your next Storm card is going to pop up, so right. you definitely are looking to mitigate damage now. Is Tsubaki the play here? And it looks like it is going to be. That's going to earn four damage on this swing and possibly another four because it seems highly unlikely that there would be a way to remove Tsubaki through that ambush. Hmm. Very valuable card for that. Gets a second Genesis Dragon. So there's a lot of potential damage on the board, and it could be over the next turn if this uh, line of play isn't, isn't uh, set up properly. Lux was able to ramp that turn, so next turn the Genesis Dragons are going to be able to come out. Mm 
mm -hmm. um, gaining a huge advantage, being able to get a lot of face damage in. And he's got one Evolve Orb left, so that's nine damage. Yeah, ne needs absolutely needs to clear the board here. The uh, no Enhance Albert comes down. How is the board clear going to come in? Gets a free Evolve on Albert. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course, that's going to pump up Mushusu. Can't, you need to clear... Oh, he won. <laughs> That was that was uh, that was fantastic. Stupendous. That was stupid. I was so preoccupied with how you. Avoid I know. I was. I was Genesis looking at the, uh, the Genesis Dragon. Yeah. yeah, and and you know, I almost wonder if um, that turn where he used Blazing Breath, um, if it would have been better spent, kind of ramping it instead because he had the Dragon Oracle. He had the option to Dragon Oracle mm -hmm. and then do a single target Blazing Breath and leave maybe the one one on the board. Right. Right. Um, something like that. And really, I feel like that race. Was was super. It was basically a call out, right? Both players on each side saying, "Hey, I know I have damage here. Do you have enough damage to, to close it out here?" Right. I feel like that Albert draw was was really key in that yeah. scenario. And having the Luminous Mage up actually was kind of fortunate in the sense that it forced the removal on the knight rather mm -hmm. on the, rather than on the Luminous Mage because uh, Lux was worried about that knight buffing up the other cards. Right, so and Luminous... Hey, that 2-1, I need to remove, and in, in the end, that 4 damage was, was just perfect. Yeah, and Luminous Mage's ability, kind of a, a moot point in that um, getting... Because he ended the game with two play, with two Evolve mm -hmm. Orbs, and he only evolved two. He evolved Albert mm -hmm. and the Mage. Um, so we've seen it become... Um, the, the ability is definitely geared toward the late game, the, mm -hmm. the Luminous Mage's ability, and that's the, one of the main cards that separates the Swordcraft decks from the Albertcraft decks that we saw uh, back mm -hmm. in Rise of Bahamut. So let's see. It looks like uh, Noah will be moving on to the semis here, and uh, we will be dropping down to watch Shadow Nexus's Unlucker versus Potwasher at Crimson Fencers. And a lot of these guilds, I mean, a lot of these clans seem to be coming up and having a good representation here on their on their uh, for their for their own individual teams. I think Noah moving on gets increasingly scary for if he's just like that. Two tournaments in a row, back to back winning. Yeah, it. he's really ramping up those points. Mm -hmm. um, because of his win last week, he was able to uh, surpass Shadow Nexus uh, for the highest mm -hmm. team points earner. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, yeah, Shadow Nexus has uh, 260 points, mm -hmm. and Mana Surge has 360 points. Mana Surge. So a full 100 points, Mana Surge, yeah. Re real, real far ahead. So it looks like, just as a little update, Unlucker and Potwasher have played their first match. It was a Shadowcraft Mirror. And mm. Paul Watcher took that first win. So we're going to be heading into game two of this particular match between the two players. Um, Pot Watcher's Shadowcraft deck, I would assume, is out because he won okay. supposedly with it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be Pot Watcher's alternate deck, which, as we see, can actually be very interesting in, in, in today's meta. I wonder if everybody's just really embracing Sword, if everybody's convinced that, oh my god, Sword is, in, is now the card to run against Dragon. Because seemingly, Sword doesn't have a good matchup against Shadow, right? right? It has to be against Dragon if right. it's against the alternate deck. So we'll see. Again, we're in the library. Oh, and it is sword. Sword for you know Plot Washer and Shadow for Unlucker. <laughs> that that is a quick adaptation. You, you know. It week, just one week it hits, and the next week everybody's just Yeah, there, there was it. there was no fade in into seeing Sword. Yeah. We we saw it I think like a few times in the in the first two weeks. Yeah. Mana Surge was actually convinced there was a lot of players from Mana Surge that they were convinced Swordcraft was, was mm -hmm. the card to run, Noah reaped the benefits of that, and now it seems like Noah's about to do it again, but people maybe are cashing on. Yeah, setting the trends. Mm -hmm. M. Bisson, of course, that means Shadowcraft again for Unlucker on the bottom here. Mm. Let's see if Potwasher can navigate this 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 matchup here. Swordcraft going first. Interesting that we see Phantom Howl. That's typically a card uh, that we haven't seen in many uh, mid-range Shadow decks. Certainly, players have been taking less and less of Phantom Howl. Mm -hmm. um, but it is uh, has got great synergy with Cerberus. When you've yes. got the Coco and Mimi in hand, and you can Phantom Howl doing tons of damage, especially if you've got an Evolve Orb as well. Just talking about the value of Shadowcraft cards being... The, the worth is in the number of followers you have on board, rather mm -hmm. than the actual quality of the statistics of the followers, which of course matters, but really it's super important to just have a bunch of stuff. Um, Phantom Hal can achieve that. Of course, as you mentioned, the Cerberus combo very important for that as well. Potmarsh getting Grimnir on the field at turn oh, three. He could have hold Sword Swing and gotten the Sergeant out of the field. That would have cleared the board. But I think having uh, the three defensive ward is going to be um, very great 
for Pot Washer. I mean, it basically eliminated any kind of aggressive move from Unlucker for that turn, right? right. He didn't want to... It was an inefficient trade into the ward, and so he wasn't willing to spend his Sergeant on that. And now there's still value coming out of the whole sold swing. Mm -hmm. And so he's essentially kind of caught up that turn. He's floating two play points here. Does he spend the other whole sold swing? I... You know? It's always dangerous. Obviously, we know that there's Double Shadow Reaper waiting in the sidelines, and that is the true terror. Mm -hmm. Double Shadow Reaper, if you throw one of your skeletons in there, you're getting two damage for a 1-1 one -one card. And so it's actually to your benefit to just keep throwing these skeletons in. Definitely some whole value. He's going to uh, clear off the Grimnir and be able to trade one of the skeletons into the Knight, giving both Reapers 2-2. Two -two. Mm -hmm. And what's difficult here is you don't have AoE board clear, Mm -hmm. So those Reapers are likely just going to live through that ambush phase, and in the next turn you can trade as necessary. Now Phantom Howl won't help you in that scenario because they get banished. Right. Oh, yeah, for, three, three. for all the clear in Swordcraft, we, we see Subaki in Dance of Death in this deck instead of uh, an AoE board clear like uh, Cyclone Blade. Mm -hmm. I think um, Potwasher's deck is definitely geared towards Dragon. Mm -hmm. um, being able to get rid of one strong follower as opposed to a large number of smaller ones. Five play point Cerberus. I think this situation is, is really interesting. There's the only Tsubaki target right now is Cerberus itself. Mm -hmm. um, and the Shadow Reapers are at a pretty healthy value of health and damage. Yeah, they're definitely paying for the weight and gold in this game. Mm -hmm. Tsubaki and then Dance of Death, one of the Shadow Reapers, I would assume, when you get the opportunity to, mm -hmm. because these things are just getting buffed up right now. Gonna Great. Opt to eliminate the ambush here. Yeah, leaving the Subaki with one health. Great trade there. But still a 5 5 Shadow Reaper. And that's just the strength of being able to play them double Shadow Reaper on turn four. Mm -hmm. Consistently such a strong play. He's got Death's Breath and Ector in his hand. I, I think he's going to try to get as many followers on his side of the board as he can mm -hmm. um, to make that huge value Ector play. He certainly seven. has the cards in hand, right? Some mm -hmm. combination of Lyril Sergeant and then Coco and Mimi. He's going to opt to use Phantom Howl, and that's going to be very efficient trading here. He could reach real far Evolve, mm -hmm. plus the Coco. Yeah. I think it might be done. There it is. Shadow Reaper Evolved up gives so much reach. We were just talking about mm -hmm. the value of having Phantom Howl in combination with Cerberus. And that huge pump up on the Shadow Reaper is actually so valuable. And hey, there you have it. Again, we see a situation where Swordcraft versus Shadowcraft is not too comfortable. The big key to look watch out for is how will Swordcraft match up against the Unlucker's second deck, which, based on trends, might be a Swordcraft mirror. It might just it be could a Swordcraft be. mirror. It could be. We, we saw, I, I, I mentioned the, the Dance of Death and the Tsubaki, definitely not geared towards mm -hmm. destroying Shadowcraft. It could be that he knew that if I get in a matchup against Shadow, I'm probably going to lose. But mm -hmm. when I lose, then I can use the Swordcraft deck again against a matchup that it's more strong against. Mm -hmm. I, you know, tough situation. Shadow Reaper is such an interesting card in, in the meta right now just because there's so little AoE clear. Mm -hmm. I I really think it should be something intentionally teched for in, in these scenarios be because... Battle. Okay, so it you is going to be die. Dragoncraft again, so we're, we're going to see basically the same matchup as in the previous... Mm -hmm. um, in the previous match between Lux and Noah. We'll see if Unlocker has a, has a similar uh, composition uh, in his Swordcraft deck, whereas Potwasher getting a really great curve here. He's going first, so he's got he's got the the Taji on his turn, and then a, a a Lancer, and then a novice trooper on the on the following turns. And there's some clear in the hand of Unlucker. He's got to waste the um the, the blazing breath on the Taji there. Mm -hmm. But Podwasher is just going to be continually um, filling up his board. Two two ward comes down. The sky's my destination. Having to play Zell on tempo, mm -hmm. not not ideal, especially when you have all those evolution orbs that you can spend. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the the interesting to think about, the interesting thing to think about is you have three Zells in your deck, and you have three orbs at most, unless you have Dark Angel Olivia. Mm -hmm. Every Zell you spend, so now he's probably only going to have two Zells in the deck. That means there's one evolution orb that's going to be unaccounted for. Of course, you're not always going to get into a situation where you just sell every single one of your evolution orbs, but mm -hmm. still, in terms of potential damage output, it is definitely a loss to have to throw in a card like that. Yeah, typically we see the um, 
Dragoncraft using the orbs in the early game, maybe one or two of them, and saving the last orb for a Zell combo. Um, gaining tempo in those early um, points of the game is, is absolutely crucial. He's going to use one of the orbs on Grimney here just to get rid of the trooper. Super awkward start for Unlucker. Turn four at four play points, and uh, you're already losing a little bit of health here. This is an important turn for Potwash to really take control of this match and, and fight against Sybil that's going to be coming down. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of healing, especially paired with the Draconic Fervor. And the question is, which do you play, right? Do you play the Sybil or the Fervor? The Fervor is going to give you instant healing. Sybil is going to give you a little bit of the board control, right. but then healing only comes after a turn later because there's no ramp. So it's going to be Sybil. And Draconic Fervor gives you the draw as well. Mm -hmm. And so because the uh, Evolve doesn't really happen on this turn, there is potential for a lot of damage to face. It just depends on how confident Potwasher is playing out that scenario if he doesn't remove Sybil. Mm -hmm. And there's an Albert and Itaji in the hand of Potwatcher. That's going to be um, six damage to face um, just with those two cards alone, plus the Knight and the Steelclad Knight on his turn already. Mm -hmm. Although the attack points of the Knight and the Steelclad Knight are three perfect amount to just take mm -hmm. out that Sybil right there. The big healing turn coming up for Unlucker as well if the Sybil survives because the Sybil will proc and the Draconic River as well will heal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'll push him up to eight play points on Unlucker's next turn after that, which can activate Ouroboros. Absolutely. We'll see what Potwasher decides to do. It's going to be the Albert. I think after some deliberation... Seems like clearing the board and then swinging Albert, preventing any of that healing from happening. And so this puts actually Unlucker in an awkward situation because he still is probably going to have a skip turn, right? Mm -hmm. You're at seven play points. What is your draw here is really important. It's going to be Isla, not mm -hmm. what you want to see. Probably going to try to evolve that or something. He plays Draconic Fervor instead. And as Dragon Oracles, so now you're up to ten, but you're about to take damage. If there's another storm card pulled here, it could go real bad. So you've got Pulse Zeus next turn. You've got Zeus next turn, but you've got to think that maybe Potwasher has uh, Subaki in the hand, mm -hmm. and that would spell his death. If you play Mage and Evolve Knight, you could get a little bit of extra reach. Mm -hmm. My sword brings hope. It all and it looks like that's going to be the choice. Shining Paladin, attack! Potwasher gaining a lot of pressure in this match. Mm -hmm. Down to four. Zeus so put in a tough spot. Oh, Israfil? Mm. It he's won't got, clear out the mage. Right, he's got his last Evolve Orb left. I mean, Blazing Breath is not much different. And he'd be able to heal for four with Israfil as well. He'd be back yeah. up to eight health. If you play the Blazing Breath, you have four more play points to, to utilize, but that really mm -hmm. only translates into Ayala. Mm -hmm. Grimner for four will take down the knight, but won't unless you evolve it, won't handle the Albert. Mm -hmm. And it probably has to be that. Yeah, that would effectively clear the entire board, and he's, he's going to go with the Easter fill, but there's not many cards in the hand of Potwasher. He's got Wholesold Swing and Lyrial Archer. And at that, he doesn't have any evolve points to use on the Lyrial Archer. Gonna swing into Albert, leave Israfil at five. But it should do handily. So this is the end. Now the only danger here is you've left the mage up. If it's Albert, mm. it's gonna be Novice Trooper. Because he gets a free evolve, if he got he something like Albert, it could be real dangerous times. Of course, one point down right. from the uh from the um enhanced. Right. Which he, would have ended. The he's match. gonna be able to get the knight on his turn if he uh, trades into the ace for Phileo here and then whole sold swings. Um, as the next move. Mm -hmm. and Is that the plan? It might be, and there's uh, there's still there's more healing in the hand of Unlucker. He's got Draconic Fervor and Ouroboros. I like this choice from Potwasher because you are definitely threatening lethal. There's so many opportunities for Storm from Swordcraft to do two. Right. And so Unlucker has no choice but to clear. Gonna heal a little bit, gets the Zell. Mm -hmm. And so this gamble is coming to a close real quick. Getting a ward as well. Um, with five health, he's, even with no Evolve Orb, um, he's still... Oh, man. That's got to hurt. Yep. It's we'll going to be able to remove, but there's still, there's no Evolution Orb. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so it's Baki. There's still Storm from Zeus. He needs to remove with... Oh, man. There's no ping. 
Oh no! That... So Zeus combined with Grimner is going to be able to close it out. Yep. Man, unlucky. The the sword deck from Potwash are definitely not able. Wasn't quite there. It wasn't quite mm -hmm. there, and I think that just barely making it out of that situation um, was was really tough. Leaving the Israfil up was such a gamble, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Ten damage because you you don't even have to swing at the target you remove, and so having that follow up in terms of board clear was an easy choice, mm -hmm. right? Right. Each time Israfil attacks, it does two damage to all enemies, mm -hmm. and so you just target the leader. You get that ten damage on the leader, and that was able plus to take the out the novice that takes yeah. out the uh, the novice trooper. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so Israfil coming in big, and I feel like being Israfil is one of that, those cards that I feel like kind of gets overshadowed by Ouroboros, by even sometimes Bahama drops, mm -hmm. especially in combination with something like Sahakwil. Um, but in that case, really kind of demonstrated the true power of, of a card that just pings two every time it swings. And being able to heal for four immediately mm -hmm. upon being played, that's huge as well. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the brackets and see uh, where we stand right now. No and Unluck are going to be facing off against each other in a another matchup that's going to be Dragon Shadow versus Sword Shadow. And it feels like this is the this is a conflict that we're going to be seeing a lot. Noah looking for his second win in a row. And in just a moment, we'll be heading down to the lower half of the bracket there to watch the rest of the players play out their decks. So far, no sign of anything Blood or Havencraft related. Yeah, sad day. Bit of a bit of a tear coming down. But we've seen the way that Noah's sword deck can handle mm -hmm. Dragon, and yeah. it's absolutely ruthless. Yeah. I think that it really comes down to circumstance, right? Mm. In that situation, we saw how close the Swordcraft deck came to closing it out. And in fact, I would argue that Maybe if there were some different choices made between clearing board and, and attack face, that could have been a, a real bad spot. The Grimner not enhanced was absolutely key there. And I almost wonder, you know, there's that point where Unlucker made the choice to play the Israfil instead of the Grimner Evolve, mm. instead of play the Israfil Evolve. And that actually ended up being very much the right choice. In some senses, interesting because Grimner Evolve swing is four damage under Tsubaki, right? Right. Whereas Israfil Evolved is right at Sabaki's level, and mm -hmm. so that kind of seems like a very risky choice. It was risky, but he did earn the healing. I think mm -hmm. that was one of the main reasons. He wasn't able to completely clear the board. He left the mage on, but getting those four points of healing um, absolutely came in mm -hmm. crucial. And I think maybe it was just that he really wanted Israfil to be able to actually swing, yeah. just because it, he would have spent that last Evolve point on the Grimner, right? Mm -hmm. And then after that point, you don't actually get the rush effect on Israfil. You don't right. get that instant two damage ping once you drop the card. Mm -hmm. So that might may have changed up the decisions a little bit. Mm -hmm. But hey, we can only play if games, you know, what ifs, right? At this point. Right. Right, right, right. So moving on, we'll be Unlucker. But now we're just about to jump into Stoles from, uh, from Counterpoint Virtuoso. I believe is the extended name of CPV. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Against EXG uh, Excelsior Gaming's Andes. So Andes another uh, team on team battle. Mm -hmm. So Shadow Nexus versus Mana Surge, and now we've got um, EXG versus um, CPV. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, you know, at this point, I'm ready for, for any of the three decks. It's so interesting based on, on numbers and statistics how poorly Sword looked like it was doing, but the West really still believe that now all of a sudden it's just everywhere. I mean, half the decks are dragon, half of them are swords, so. Yeah, it just took time figuring out exactly what was the perfect comp needed to take down dragon. Um, and it looks like it's it's the Luminous Mage with um, the Unicas and the and this the troopers and, and the more mid-range deck mixed in with Alberts yeah. and Tsubakis as well. Looks like a Shadow Dragon uh, matchup here. Hmm. It's been a while since we've seen a Sahakwiel played. Um, with those neutral, with this neutral deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Either we just haven't really seen it drawn, hmm. but Rahab and Sahak are two cards that we haven't really seen too much today. Right. Yeah, we haven't seen Rahab play. We'll see if um, typically the, the two main archetypes of Dragon is the Storm Ramp and also the Neutral Ramp, where the Sahakwiel you have the Israfils and the Lucifers, um, and also um, the Bahamuts and the Zell combos really making use of those of a lot of the neutral followers in the deck. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, seeing this a hot wheel gives it away that this is more of a more of a neutral deck. Mm -hmm. With, and I'm sure there's um, some fortes, maybe maybe even a Genesis Dragon mixed in. We'll see what he brings out on the table. 
some very important pieces here for Shadowcraft, but it's already been three turns, and the only thing to show for it is the uh, Tenant of the Night. Mm. Yeah, Shadow gains its biggest advantage is on the first three turns of the game. Necro Assassin? I mean, it's not super valuable, the cards on the board. Maybe you could argue the Zell. Right. I mean, turn four is coming up. You could, you could just evolve the Zell and get a Storm Rahab. Mm. I mean, that's a thing. Yeah, that's... <laughs> With two damage right there, yeah. <laughs> so there is a a world where perhaps you would want to remove it. And there still are a lot of a options in the hand of Andes here. I think he's gonna uh, he's gonna play the Grimnir, maybe soul conversion on the Attendant of Night uh, for his last move. Getting a Lich um, when he's only on um, four play orbs, um, really great. So next turn the Lich is gonna be able to attack. Mm -hmm. But here comes the decision. There's a there's a handful of options here for Stoles. Mm -hmm. Gonna opt to go down the path of spell usage here. You throw the Ala in. Yeah, you could trade the Alia in and then um, Blazing Breath to finish off the Lich and then go for face, saving one of your evol Evolve Orbs. Mm -hmm. Getting some face damage and uh, clearing off your opponent's board yeah. effectively. And getting the ramp. And getting the ramp, yeah. That's an absolutely stellar turn. Three massive advantages coming up. Stole. It's a clear board, ramp as well. There it is. I've got to take a break. And burp. I'll live again. So let's look at the situation again for Andes. Hmm. He's in on the fifth turn and there's still been no opportunity to play Prince Catacomb. Right. And that kind of spells bad news for me. He only has four shadows here. Turn 5 is typically where you would play Cerberus, and that seems like a pretty good play. But really, you're still not gaining very much in way of bodies on board. And if he wants to clear the board, he's going to have to use one of his Evolve points here. Mm -hmm. And that leaves him with one, and Stoltz has still got all three of his. Yeah. Going to finally remove the Zell here, so there's no threat of that Zell pulling in another card and instantly letting no it swing face. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And pulls another Zell, but kind of an uncomfortable turn here for Dragoncraft. Right. You Ideally, evolve? you would like Sybil somewhere around now. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. But Rahab will have to do, and I think he's just going to let it buff up. Yeah, it's going to gain another two attack points at the end of this turn, while still remaining with two defense points. Still a, a pretty sizable board that Andy's is going to have to chew through next turn. And another empty board that Andy has to live with. Yeah. There it is. 6-2. Perfect situation for uh, Mimi to come down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see if he chooses to do that. That'll leave him with five orbs. Um, he does have a Bone Chimera and also um, the Catacomb in hand as well. He's got such a full hand, he hasn't really been playing many cards, honestly. Mm -hmm. The options haven't been great, and typically you would love to spam followers and then follow mm -hmm. it up with a catacomb. It just happens that Dragoncraft has been able to really remove things mm. and it prevent that scenario from happening. So he's going to use Soul Conversion, and that's going to be great because the two followers are really going to help kind of secure some kind of footing. Now Overflow is active for Stoltz. We'll see if he's going to just go for the draw, um, leaving him with five. Perhaps a Rahab is a play. Yeah. yeah, I think evolving that, taking out one of the skeletons. It won't be long now. There it is, and he has one evolve left for the Zell. Mm -hmm. There is a situation where Saha Zell could be a thing. And with a Rahab down there doing five, this game could very easily come to a close. Yeah, in a few turns, um, Stoltz is going to be able to do the Saha Zell Israfil combo. Um, if, if he holds on to that one last Evolve Orb for the Zell, which I think he definitely wants to do. And he could spend the last, his last Evolve Orb on uh, the White King here. So Immortal Thane gets buffed up. He's gonna remove Rahab. It'll stay alive, and that's a massive board that Stoltz is gonna have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And Evolve these Israfil would effectively clear the board here. He's going to Sahak Wheel, yep. Not gaining the health, but Israfil is still able. Interesting, he is still going to play with Zell and give uh, Israfil the storm, so he's going to attack face instead, mm -hmm. get that 8 damage, wipe the board as well, at the same time, so neither of those whites could get their proc effect. 
That's right, and he's still got Israfil in the next turn as well. A massive amount of pressure mm -hmm. put on by Stoltz. That's a fantastic turn. Six health. Oh, wow, he mills a card too. Six health is, is real dangerous in this scenario just mm -hmm. because Grimner already pushes four of that. You leave any of these cards up and, and you're in trouble. He, 14 shadows, I mean. He does have the White King. That's a ward with Bane. Mm -hmm. It's going to be crucial. Um, Could also Ector. There it is. That'll help him clear the board for sure. And with the, the, the White King still on uh, zero cost, I mean, he could still play that next turn if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. Or this turn. No yes. And that's really important because defending yourself against any kind of damage to face, I mean, how are you going to take that gamble at 10 play points that nothing like, you know, Genesis Dragon or... Right, 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 right. Definitely. Anything of that nature is going to come down here. The top deck is so scary. He doesn't have Evolution Orb, so there's not going to be a way to just instantly swing. Grimner is going to do four to everything here, and the White King is perfect just because it has five. Right. But the two zombies will be gone. The two zombies will be gone, and, and Ector will stay on the field as well with two health, but that's that's still four damage as well. So then Andy's will be left with two health. And this is scary as well. Coco and Mimi are still in hand, and there's another Cerberus to play. Mm-hmm. Which means that there's a lot of potential reach if you leave any kind of follower on the board. Yeah, definitely. And there's no Evolve Orb, so Easterfield's not going to be able to attack. He's already at 18 health, so healing for four, uh, you're not able to overheal. So those two extra points of health will kind of go to waste. Um, and meanwhile, there's still a, a pretty sizable hand for Andes. He's got a lot of options next turn. He could Catacomb his whole hand if he wanted to. Or Catacomb his whole side of the board uh, after this Grimnir, of course. So Grimmer's going to be the play, putting Andy's to two. He's got nine, 11, 13. If he plays the other Cerberus, he could play. Hmm. I think he might be able to kill him if he plays Cerberus. Cerberus would be five, so he has four play points, so he could. That gives him eight damage on top of the nine. No, it's so close. Hmm. Unless I did my math wrong. I think. It's four for each pair of the cards. So it's eight, nine. It's got 17 damage. But he, he has still, to clear out the... Uh, yeah, he's still got to clear Grimner. out the ward. And either card he swings is going to get traded here. So he might actually try to go for double Mimi. Yep. Hmm. Ow. So this is a situation that we were talking about before where, I mean, I guess if Sahak Wheel comes down, mm -hmm. then that could end the match. But Isterfil doesn't have an ability to... Oh. There's the Bahamut. Wow. That is going to clear the board, but then there's the Necro Assassin in the hand of Andy. So next turn, he could um, attend an night of the Necro Assassin. Mm -hmm. Each of these turns, though, are, are very scary just in the sense of... Um, if there's any opportunity, any kind of storm, right? Mm -hmm. Or right. if you can activate Israfil's ability. All right, drawing a Forte, drawing a Genesis mm -hmm. Dragon will effectively end out this game. There is a Death's Breath. That's going to be three wards. Um, but um, that's still leaving Bahamut up. If you, if you play the Death's Breath, you won't be able to clear that out. Yeah. Well, you could probably that in Necro Assassin. That's right, yeah, you could still Necro Assassin. So let's see. I mean, you're fighting for your life right now. The ward is going to be really important. He's going to leave Bahamut up. Oh, God. But the zombies have three health. They're going to... Uh, but the thing is going to hit past. Yeah, it's going to hit past. It's going to hit past. Yeah. Oh, my God. And that was the exact situation that Andy's wanted to avoid. Mm-hmm is a Sahak wheel draw into the Israfil active. Right. Such a dangerous situation. Every single turn that was passed was was very key. Right. And as we know, that last turn actually didn't matter at all for Andes mm -hmm. because once that Sahak wheel got drawn, it actually didn't matter how he arranged, unless there was some kind of self-healing. Um, yeah, just what a situation to be in. Yeah, and now, and now the Dragoncraft deck is off the table. Mm -hmm. And so depending on what his next yeah. deck is, he's going to have to go up, up against the Shadow deck as well. Yeah. Yeah, so Shadowcraft will will remain. And I think that was a very interesting situation. The early game was so tough for Andes, right? Yeah. Could not mm -hmm. get any kind of footing, did not play the Catacomb, 
I think until the end, right? That right. one play there where it didn't even matter it anymore. It didn't even matter, yeah. Um, not a situation you want to be in. So he's going to go again with Shadow against this time the Shadow deck of Stoles. And so now they're in the mirror match where I think the, the outcome is not quite as clear. Shadowcraft mirrors can be very reliant on kind of what kind of early pressure you get. Are you going to be the first one to double Reaper? Are you right. going to be the first one to Ector? Right. How does that play out now that now the turn goes to Andy's to start out? And we saw how much more uh, mid-range that Andy's deck was. He, he was running Attendant of Knights and Necro Assassin. Um, that's not that aggressive at all. That's um, definitely uh, more focused on control when you're able to use the Necro Assassin to destroy your own followers, get rid of enemy followers as well. Um, but I think the board clear, how each player is going to be able to board clear effectively, how effective that's going to be, is going to be absolutely crucial uh, in this matchup. Real unfortunate for Andy's. He started first but didn't have a turn one drop. Stoles drew into a turn one and a turn two. Mm -hmm. And has Orthra sitting, waiting at the side, Ooh, and the Boat Camaro on three. Right. The classic Sesame Street situation that makes Shadowcraft so successful. It's going to be really tough. Sesame Street? Yeah. So you've got the one, two, three, four, you know, oh, learning yeah. how to count. Counting. Yeah, definitely. Very easy. You just got these nice cards with the big numbers printed on them, and all you have mm -hmm. to do is. Put them in order. Yep, 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 yep. One through four. In this case, he even has the five and the six. So Yeah, he definitely does. And there's another catacomb in the hand of Andy's as well that he just drew. Catacomb comes out for Andy's much quicker now. This is more a typical catacomb situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As opposed to the last game, which was just absolutely abysmal. Oh, and this is this is a catacomb situation. Right? That's this is now looking abysmal for Stoltz. He's got oh, four of those followers that he's gonna have to chew through. Mm. Deadly on the skull beast, but that's okay. Evolving <laughs> going for face. Yeah, definitely a great choice here. Yeah, gonna try to try to race. Now, the yeah. big thing about catacomb is there's a lot of quote unquote free trades to be had mm -hmm. and especially when they spawn two skeletons apiece mess with me? basically trade in one damage to get two tell on you, draws into Grimner which that ward might be very important against the game plan of Stoles which seems to be pushing Andes into a particular health range mm -hmm. the Cerberus Phantom Howl combo is a thing that could be Death's Breath is also a safer option that mm -hmm. also gains back board control here. Meanwhile, those two turns are leading up to Ector for Andes, and because Catacomb was played twice, that means there's going to be Shadows Galore, right? Shadows Galore, and there's still there's only three Shadows in the hand of Stultz. He does have, uh, there's four now, but he does have two other followers that he'll be, he'll be able to destroy this turn as well. Um, so we'll see if he's able to, to work up to six Shadows where Death's Breath will get its effect. Mm -hmm. In the coming turns, I think he will be able to. Evolve Skeleton going to take down Orthrus. Now just one skeleton left to represent Stolz's board. Needs to make something happen. Soul Squasher is tempting, but I really don't think it's a good idea just on a 3-2. No, not a good idea uh, specifically there. And you also want to keep the shadows as well. Mm -hmm. Because that costs four shadows. Yeah. We talked about it a little bit, right? Who's going to be the first to, to, to run into Ector? And it seems like Andy's already has that win condition secured for him. Now, mm -hmm. there's still two turns left that Stoles could kind of run into something. All right, we'll see what his draw is this turn. It's another Cerberus that's just more damage than Andy's is, is yeah. going to be able to pile Having on. four followers on board, too, really makes it yeah very uncomfortable. So we could swing for face here and, and gain a massive advantage because I don't think Stoltz is going to be able to to end the game next turn. He's got six damage. Sorry, gotta go. Now Phantom Howl with Coco Mimi Evolve is, you've got 11 damage there. Yep, yep, next turn. He needs Ward. Or he needs it. Uh, I don't know if he can end it here. No, yeah, it might be Stolt taking this away. Yeah. He's got seven shadows, Coco, Mimi, and an evolve point. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be it. Yeah, four at six play points too. That's the exact value that you would want. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Come comes in. It's five on the board. You can evolve, get the two. You got four from Coco and Mimi. And what a win from Stoles. He's going to be able to challenge Shadowcraft twice over. 
once with the Dragoncraft deck and once with his own Shadowcraft deck. And it was a race to kind of see what the win conditions were. Mm -hmm. Ector was just a turn too late. Just a turn too late. We, we mm -hmm. see how this aggro shadow is able to stack up against um, a mid-range deck and finish the game before Ector's even an option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we talked about it, too, as well. You kind of identified some of the things that seemed a little bit more mid-rangey. Mm -hmm. And the player who went second, and actually that last evolution orb really came in handy, the player who went second had the better board control right. because he had that nice curve. Mm -hmm. He had and, the nice uh, curve and the extra evolve point to play with. Mm -hmm. And I think that really hurts, especially when you can't match, right? When you can't match that situation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Of course, playing the Catacomb on three and then the Catacomb later is actually a huge benefit. But a lot of good choices were made on the side of Stoles to go for face mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. try to wipe the board and fight in that kind of field of battle. He said, hey, you know, I think pushing health is really what I need to do and got it exactly on the dot. Cerberus into the turn six win. It's a classic. Yeah, and that's going to be Stoles advancing to the semifinals. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at how our semis are playing out. Of course, we already knew the match on the upper side of the bracket is going to be Noah and Unlucker and Stoles is going to be facing off against either Noir or Hectorox. 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 Is is Bahan a, a team, would you say? No. I'm not familiar. No. May very well be. Hopefully we can have a little chat with him. Yeah, in, that'd be nice. Uh, after after the tournament and find out. Totally. Because it's always nice to see other teams coming in and competing in the Shadowverse Open. Yeah, for sure. You would like to compete yourself. Make sure to go to our website to find all the most up-to-date information, shadowverse.nge.io. And you can find out broadcast schedule, all that kind of stuff there. Also on Twitter, uh, you can talk to us at WatchNGE, as well as get announcements and updates there. And uh, make sure you join our giveaway. More information in the Twitch panels. You can win 3,500 vials. And uh, that's one legendary that can be crafted. And uh, unfortunately, you can't craft animated legendaries. That's the only thing. That, but that'd be pretty sweet. I'd like that. That would be pretty yeah. cool. But I don't know. You know, animated but, cards are kind of rare. Yeah. The, the thing about it, it's so cool when you like open up the pack and you mm -hmm. get the animated card. Like that's that's the feeling I think that that side games is going for mm -hmm. with introducing the animated cards. It's like, oh, that's mm -hmm. animated. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. Would also like to take the time to remind you before we jump into this game that Shadowverse times are getting pushed back an hour. That's right. 3 p.m. tournament start. 5 p.m. broadcast start. Let's go into the last quarterfinals match here and see who will be moving on to face off against the four. You've got one more chance to see if there's a Haven deck represented in the tournament today. It's going to be a Shadow Shadow Mirror matchup. Mother, we'll see what mother, unique run. additions and compositions these players have added to their decks. Um, those little advantages that they'll be able to take away that will mean the difference between victory or defeat in this round of eight game. There's no more M. Bison, unfortunately. No. No, not today. But there is um, a great 2-3 drop from Noir, and, and not a single one drop for, for either player. All right. Ooh. So the Shadow Reaper. Ah, oh, now he just came into the one drop. Oh, that's got to feel bad. Yeah. Um, still still definitely a way to make use of it to kind of even out a curve on maybe, you know, turn four, you play a three and a one, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah, playing, um, playing the Skull Beast and then Prince Catacomb on turn four. Definitely a good play. Yeah. But he might just play the Catacomb. I think Noir is deciding whether or not to use Zombie Party on the Sergeant or summon his own Sergeant. Definitely, that was a line of play that we saw earlier, actually. Right. To deny that follower on board. But right. in many ways, you could think about kind of the difficulties of fighting for board in that fashion against Shadow. Mm -hmm. Looks like that's going to be the choice. Certainly, you did not have any followers on the board yourself, so mm -hmm. you can't really justify kind of letting a board be. Right, but clearing the board, it um, uh, Actorox just came into Soul Conversion. Um, so he's going to be able to, he could uh, summon the Skull Beast and then Soul Conversion the Skull Beast, clearing the board again, but you get more cards in your hand as well and uh, more Shadows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that play gives you a ton of shadows here. Slow conversion counts as one as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's already turned four, and he's got five shadows. Mm -hmm. That currency is definitely going to make a difference. As well with that. Bone Chimera is going to be the turn three play for Noir. Mm. He's got Prince Catacomb there too. Has Interesting choice to 
give Noir the two skeletons to kind of play with next turn. And he's got, he doesn't have a one drop, but he does have Catacomb. Yep. Turn four is important because you can play Shadow Reaper and aid it with, with another card. And Sergeant right. is not bad, right? And now you can trade the two skeletons into the Reaper as well, making that just an absolute beast. It's still got Ambush, and it's already on 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. Of course, the ideal situation that we've seen earlier is a double Shadow Reaper on turn four, but that's right. super unlikely. Yeah, really unlikely, yeah, but definitely feels good when you can get it in the game. Evolving, just to be sure, um, it's not going to be able to be cleared off by something like a Foul Tempest, which is a card we don't really see that often, but it has massive effect, especially knowing that Actorox had six shadows. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of shadows, enough shadows to activate the three damage from the Foul Tempest. Mm -hmm. So again, we find a situation where one of the Shadowcraft players, specifically the one that went first, is having to fight for board control mm -hmm. and spending evolution orbs to do so. Let's see if that translates here. Going to buff up the Shadow Reaper one more. Mm -hmm. The play here is interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Ideally, on this turn, you would love to trade more with cards you have on board, but because Catacomb is not played, there's no oh, skeletons on the field. Inside. All right. Play? He's going to be able to get rid of the, the Catacomb and go for face for a significant amount of damage. If he evolved the Catacomb and traded that in, um, he could have done seven damage instead of six. But I think um, having the Sergeant at 4-1 with still the last word mm -hmm. summon a skeleton is going to be crucial. It's gonna be now, huge. Death's Breath is an interesting option here. Mm -hmm. You need to reach six damage to remove that Shadow Reaper, right. um, which is awkward with what you have on board. Your own Shadow Reaper is not quite that buff. You can throw a mm -hmm. Skeleton in to make it 3-3, three, three, and that brings it a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. But even with Evolve, you need to... He could uh, Evolve Cerberus and the Skeleton as well. That'd be six damage as well. Mm -hmm. Killing the Shadow Reaper and buffing up your own one. Mm -hmm. Throwing Cerberus and the Skeleton in. Right. But then that's two cards for the Shadow Reaper, and you leave the, uh, unless you spend your Mimi card. Right, right, right. Leaving the Sergeant up there. There it is. I and that's you. a smart choice. Yeah. I think. Keeping, keeping, yeah, keeping your Reaper. Reaper safe while getting rid of the opponent's Reaper. Really great play uh, from Actorox. Mm -hmm. Nor not drawing the most useful card in this scenario. Mm -mm. Maybe he can return the favor by using Cerberus of Zone. He could. He could um, Lyrial Archer evolve that, attack into the, the Reaper. That would destroy them both. And then um, Catacomb again, if he wanted to. He still has got options for that as well. Or Cerberus as well, being able to trade the Cerberus and evolved would leave it alive with one health and give you the Coco and Mimi. The currency that's going to be absolutely crucial. Those options. Lyrial to me as an option seems slightly more sensible mm. because on the next turn you can play Cerberus and Coco and Mimi on the same turn. That's true. Giving you a lot of threat. Mm -hmm. Having that second catacomb drop is going to ensure that you have a board when that turn comes around to gain maximum effect out of the uh, out of the uh, Coco and Mimi. Right, that's true, but there is the two death's breaths in the hand of Actorox. Mm -hmm. So even if you have the full board with followers enhanced by uh, Coco and Mimi, with that damage, that's still, that's nine points of war that you're going to have to chew through. Mm -hmm. Destiny calls. It's going to be Erd. He resets the Shadow Reaper and swings the skeleton. And it doesn't gain ambush as well. Mm -hmm. Upon being uh, resummoned by Erd. Yeah. Fanfare effects typically do not activate when right. they're being summoned in that sense. Right. Pro needs tips. Be, mostly needs to be played from hand. Yeah. For those things to activate. Yeah. Oh, wow. There's a potential to make that Shadow Reaper real strong. Yeah, very strong. He's going for it. He's just going for the great trade. And he's still got enough orbs to play Cerberus. Yeah, and I think that might be a, a, a good option to do, just mm -hmm. to make sure that all the zombies are cleared. Now, he has a second instance of Death's Breath. Mm -hmm. What are you hiding inside? He could evolve the Catacomb. Mm -hmm. He could evolve it, but that wouldn't kill it off. That wouldn't kill off the catacomb. It would, it would get rid of the zombie. Um, so the skeleton dying here, that's going to make the Shadow Reaper even stronger. Uh, if he attacks that, and he's going to evolve the catacomb. Yeah. Dance, dear bones of white. 
We'll see. He's not going to... It's interesting. He didn't choose to attack the skeleton into the... I think that was smart just right. because in this next turn, uh, if there's a board clear option for Hactorox, mm -hmm. which he, he likely will want a board clear, that skeleton's going to die anyways. Right. And before he swings on the turn after that, on Nor's next turn here, mm -hmm. he could just choose to trade in his skeleton at that point in time. How long has that skeleton been on the field? It could have two summon skeletons on it. Yeah, that's possible. I think it's just one, mm -hmm. but it's definitely possible. A skeleton may have lived a very long life as a skeleton. <laughs> You're like, yeah, that's possible, shaking your head. <laughs> <laughs> Tough situation here. Mm -hmm. There's, there's, You need to remove the board, but every card you remove is just buffing up the Shadow Reaper. You have no Evolve Orbs. Just warding up. And this is basically free pickings for Noor to decide how exactly he wants to, to set up his, uh, his board, his mm -hmm. own board here. And one of the skeletons that can attack this turn, it doesn't have the last word summon a skeleton, so he's still got enough space on his board to summon Cerberus. If, for instance, they all had the last words, the board just would have been full with five followers the whole time. Mm -hmm. But now he's able to play Cerberus and get that Coco and Mimi. Clear up the board. We'll see how much face damage he's able to actually get this turn. It doesn't look like it's going to be enough to finish the game, but that's a massive advantage mm -hmm. uh, for Noir. He's got nine ready to go. The other uh, grievance here is there isn't a way to force the Lurching Corpse to even die. Mm -hmm. So that's not even a real removal option. Oh, the Ector. Mm -hmm. But there's still so much health on that Shadow Reaper, it's... it's. Yeah. Still, uh, uh, two skeletons, or excuse me, two zombies enhanced by Ector would be, able to, would be enough to finish it off. Mm -hmm. The Ector is interesting because if you play that you don't have the option to play Grimner. Right. I think by this time you're when you're on turn nine and turn ten is just around the corner, you I think you really want to save that Grimnir for um, a massive uh, turn eight play, especially when none of these only one of the skeletons has the last word summon a skeleton. Mm -hmm. So he thinks for a little while and then mm -hmm. plays a skull beast. This head can be taken. One point with... left for Coco still. Right. Gonna give the Skull Beast Rush. Trades against the Shadow Reaper. That was a big pain. Mm -hmm. Definitely a thorn in Actorox's side that's now dealt with. Should be crashing into the skeletons that have the last that don't have the last word effect. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving. He doesn't see it. Doesn't see the the options. That's going to be Actorox tapping out. I that's actually so interesting to me. Yeah, um, there was only had, one card in the hand of Noir. Yeah, I mean, I I actually don't remember the health level that he was at. It's it's being covered now. But if he had cleared, he could have cleared it out. Two more of the skeletons left. Two on the board. Sparta Sergeant isn't going to affect the board in any way. Right. It would just basically basically be on the top deck. But I guess Actorox didn't know what that card was going to be, and there's mm -hmm. still the draw next turn yeah, as well, so that's draw. two possible options. I mean, it's definitely winnable, unless he was at two health, and I'm just misremembering. Unless he was at two health, and I'm I think he had more than health. It was three or four. Yeah. yeah. Real close. I, You know, sometimes you're just going to make your opponent prove it, right? Mm -hmm. Make your opponent prove it. That... But mad props to Actorox. I mean, he felt like he was beaten. Maybe maybe even knew it. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah. Really yeah. great play. That's interesting, too, because he has Grimner in hand, you know? Mm -hmm. He knows that if he could just make it to the next turn, there's a possibility that he could start suing things in favor. Right, 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 right. Um, And as far as direct damage to face, I'm thinking really hard, and maybe the only one is the Rabbit Necromancer. Mm -hmm. Rabbit Necromancer. Um, there is a card. I don't know the I mean, name I of it. I guess you could run neutral cards like Dance Death. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You summon it, and there's a Shadowcraft card. You summon it, and if you have four shadows, it does four damage directly to face. Mm -hmm. And it's a seven cost, has five attack, four defense. Yeah. Cursed soldier, cursed, cursed yeah. something. It's something cursed. Everything something. in Shadowcraft is cursed. Yeah, cursed. You know what else is cursed? Oh, our uh, our axis of evil, so to speak. So it looks like we will go another tournament without seeing Havencraft represented. We really wanted to destroy this piece of paper. I specifically wanted to. I mm -hmm. think that'd be hilarious destroying. But we cannot do so. Yeah. Under Aya Senpai's guidance, if we if we attempt to destroy this paper before the right time, that's right. Then we will be cursed ourselves. I don't want to be cursed. Would you? No. no. 
Don't want to deal with that. So, alas, we save the tome for another day. <laughs> another day, another tome. Wow. What a... So, interesting outcome. Obviously, last week's NGE Open kind of shaped this week's in, in a small fashion in mm -hmm. terms of just, like, the decks that we get to see All right. and what people bring. And it seems like people are pretty down the middle about Swordcraft and Dragoncraft. I feel like we've seen a very even amount of that. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I feel like in this particular iteration of the tournament, Dragoncraft has come out on top just slightly. Just slightly, yeah. It's almost like if there's a pyramid, so to speak, mm -hmm. right at the top of the pyramid, right here, there's Shadowcraft, mm -hmm. right? With with mid-range aggro as well. And then the next two points down are mid-range sword and also dragon mm -hmm. with, it, with its two main archetypes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... We'll see. I mean, I would love to, to see how the JCG tournament winner made it through with Havencraft, as well as just previously. I mean, we've seen some incredible things, actually, from the JCG region in terms of dimensional shift as well, making yeah, it through. Yeah, absolutely. In the meta, there have been some just some very, very big curiosities. Those tournaments are not small. Right? And also Forestcraft as well. We've seen um, the Jungle Board Index take first place. Mm -hmm. And also the, the more traditional... Um, or, Traditional, I say, but um, the one the decks not utilizing Jungle Warden mm -hmm. that have White Wolf and Silverbolt, mm -hmm. but have the new addition Elf Queen and and Crystallia Aaron mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Certainly a good diversity. Those tournaments are no joke as well. They're single limited best of threes, and yeah. they are thousands of people large. Jeez, thousands. Just a sea of people. You have so to, to swim through participants. So to win with the Haven Tech, you've got to you've got to climb that you've ladder. You've got to win rounds man. with all of its greasy rungs. You're just climbing yeah. up constantly. Oh man. Yeah. That's that an image. I don't want to. I don't want to go back to that. Just jumping on on your back, you know, <laughs> trying to drag you down. Fighting through all kinds of zombie parties. Yeah. Yeah. Zombie parties. Exactly. Yeah. If you fall down the ladder on the bottom, the zombies are are still partying, and they're like, "Oh, hey, it's just the food." That delivery? was that was the one. I told myself, you know what? It's tempting. We're only going. I'm only going to give myself one zombie party joke, <laughs> or one skeleton party joke. That was it. That's all. We're done. There's no more. Arthur, holding you to it. The jokes are dead, Coco. I'm sorry. Look how upset you've made him. Yeah, he's real upset. He wants more. Even yeah, even his eyes are like downcast. Yeah, he, that's his. That's his brethren. You know, he's he's Shadow Craft. Yeah, no. that's his brethren, Cerberus. Hey, I would love to see more of the Street Fighter characters. Who was the uh, representative for Havencraft? Oh, jeez. I know Sword is Chun Li. Uh huh. I know Forest is Cami. Yeah. If I you know that. If you were if you were to Cammy. ask me, like, just name off Street Fighter characters, probably Cami was like the one I could like name off the top. What of my about head. Ryu and Ken? <laughs> oh yeah, Ryu. And Ken, like, but what you, about the Freedom Fighter, the man himself? It's not like, like yeah, you're naming. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. But like, it, like yeah. as, on the, as far as like being on the top of my on, head, on just like being able to spit them out. Just like, Cami. You know, just Cammy. She's definitely like, I, I feel like the staple. I mean, like, I recognize her. Everybody knows Cammy. Yeah. Like, Rhea is definitely true. more more famous as you well. You know, too. I'll give you that. You're right. You're right about that one. Yeah. So, here we are. All those Cammy cosplays, man. I can't get enough of them. Mm. I, uh, I'm going to have to put a, a mature you filter on your browsing. <laughs> browsing here. Come on. Arthur doesn't All approve, right. but it is the second game of this round of eight. Yeah. Seems like there was there was some uh, delay, some holdup, so we're going to be catching up between Hactorox and Noir in their second game of their best of three series here. Mm -hmm. Noir is one step up after that intense Shadowcraft mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a situation to be in. And we've seen how uh, Shadowcraft can absolutely punish the sword deck because the sword decks are um, many of them. Naval Guard Simone. Not a card we see that often, but I mean, really great when you get that five-five war. I Absolutely like how I feel card. like you're talking faster because the replay is going. The replay is going, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've got to keep up and then, you know, talk about the cards. All oh, that's Grimnir on the field. All oh, that's probably going to be Soul Squasher next to him. Maybe Lurching Corpse as well. There okay, doesn't seem to be like that, a lot of good options on the side. Of that's got to stop real quick. <laughs> you're running out of things. I run out of steam, running out of things to yeah. talk about. There was already very little steam <laughs> to begin with. Um, so, Maid Leader, he's got two of them. He's going to pull two commanders here. And he's got a solid hand going into the five play point and up. Yeah, the maid leader getting to draw. The, the first one getting Albert and the second one getting the mage. I mean, absolutely stellar. Would have been, I mean, 
would have been nice if, if both of them were Albert or both of, both of them were the mage. But, I mean, now you've got options. Gonna use the Soul Squasher on the maid leader, and I think that's fine, just because the other mm -hmm. options at hand aren't super great. Mm -hmm. But it is actually a little bit concerning. You have two Death's Breath, so that can kind of extend your life in this particular match for a little while. But he doesn't have enough shadows uh, to get the enhanced ability. But this situation is just, oh. <gasps> oh, oh, took out the maid. Oh, God. no. God. No. But he was able to draw Grimnir, and he's going to evolve that and be able to trade into the mage, leaving Grimnir with one health, of course. Yeah. So this is an interesting situation. Obviously, mage is going to continuously fight you back the board. Oh, man, and this Albert evolved with the knight. That's, oh, that's so much and damage. And he's more than happy to spend these points, right? Because oh, interesting. He's evolving the Albert instead of the, I guess, um, he having... Wants I mean, there's, there's a few ways to look at it, right? right? You get seven health as opposed to three, right. right? The seven health is much more difficult, and you want to maintain your Albert mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Constantly swinging for five, and in this situation, you still have the knight to, to evolve. Right. And this is just a dangerous combat. Like, every single turn since turn five has just been going back and forth between Luminous Mage, Albert, and he still has another Albert to come after that. Such strong turns. And he's got a Fangblade Slayer next turn as well. Thing comes down. I'm trying to make something happen. So unfortunately, the extra health is not really going to play into that situation as well. Mm -hmm. But it does get the free of all the luminous mage, and that's going to swing phase. He's going to wipe one. He's coming very, very close to lethal, right? He has Fangly mm -hmm. Slayer, and then he has Enhanced Albert next turn. Mm -hmm. Attacking the. Hmm. Interesting that he went for the um, the Immortal Thane and, and just giving the White King in the hand of Actorox. Yeah. So that now that's a ward with Bane next turn that he's going to have to chew through. But if he, it is going to be zero cost mm -hmm. plus the Death's Breath or um, that uh, the Grimnir as well. Yeah. So that's that's going to be a lot of wards that the Enhanced Albert is going to have to chew through. I don't think it's going to have much of a problem because he's got he's got the two attacks, um, and you could also. Because you have to get through the wards anyway, you can almost save that evolve point. Um, yeah. Oh man, man, that White King is going to be and so massive. But it, it didn't get it didn't get the enhanced ability. It didn't, he didn't have enough shadows. Yeah. It's it's going to be interesting because he has the opportunity to smash into two of them with Albert coming in enhanced. Mm -hmm. But then that also leaves Albert open to being removed. I wonder if the play is to try to use some combination of uh, Genos, or maybe not even an Enhanced Albert to try to maximize the amount of cards you can clear. Right, but you've got, you have to remember, you've got the Mage on the field as well. That's going to be a free Evolve free point evolves. for the Albert. So, you, I mean, you might as well, if you've got another Evolve point next turn, if you want to Evolve um, the Subaki or the Geno, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of options in the hand of Noir. Unfortunately, he's got two Subakis, and um, not What's really going to really do dangerous much. What's too is you can't it's actually very important for Nora to clear the board just because mm -hmm. Cerberus is coming up as well. Right. And if you have any amount of followers remaining, you only have 14 health. That's not a ton, right? Mm -hmm. with, the, with the four damage that comes with Cerberus, that starts to get real concerning. Yeah, if Noir was able to draw a Fangblade Slayer next turn, maybe Evolve the Albert this turn, you still have that Evolve Orb available next turn um, because you get the free one. And then that would be an evolved Fangblade Slayer. There's five damage right to face if mm -hmm. there's a follower to available available to attack. Because I don't think that Noir is going to be able to completely clear off this board. He's going to play Levin Vanguard, mm -hmm. Angel of the Word. Spends the uh, last evolve orb there. So if he wants to evolve Albert, the mage needs to persist. Now Enhanced Albert will be able to do six. Mm -hmm. And the situation is about the same as if he had played Albert. In oh, that and there's a, there's a turn ten Grimnir. Oh boy, and this could get real tough. My tempest shall judge you. I'm gonna get the ward, wipe the board now. Fortunately, the two knights will remain. Mm -hmm. At your service. You still got two knights, and the enhanced Albert is gonna be able to take out both of those wards mm -hmm. on the field for Actorox. It's interesting because he's lost his mage now, so he won't be able to reach the king. Right. But the king, it, it, it's not looking that scary because it it didn't get the enhanced ability. He didn't have enough shadows when he played it, so it's it's, mm -hmm. it's just a three four follower. Still, 
The I mean, scariest thing it's again, attack damage. is yeah, yeah. The scariest thing is that at ten health, you're within very lethal range for Shadowcraft top decks, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. Four damage from Cerberus. Oh man, a third Subaki. Yeah, and and we talked about this where Subaki's value against Shadowcraft is really diminished in many senses. Mm -hmm. Right, it's so late game, but there still aren't really cards, and Cerberus is certainly not going to provide you that opportunity as well. Ow. Right. So he's just going to have to deal with the fact that three damage is on the board that can be converted to seven, and it's just going to mm. be a sergeant. This is <gasps> he needs he needs to play Cerberus and clear Albert. Yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely the option here. He will be able to, to buff up the white and do enough damage to clear the board, but then there's still not many options in the hand of Vactorax. That only leaves him with a soul conversion and a sergeant. Of course, there's also not many options in the hand of Noir as well. Subaki, it is, it does have ambush, which is crucial. It won't be able to destroy a follower depending on what Actorox draws so it's next It's going to be hard to remove. It will be really hard to remove. And it's got four attack. Actorox, unfortunately, has five defense. Mm -hmm. He needs an extra turn. Right. And you can't yeah. play two Subakis in mm -hmm. one turn. Yeah. But if he gets a Tsubaki and some like a novice trooper, mm -hmm. that could be a thing. That could be a thing, absolutely. Here comes a Cerberus. Maybe. Okay. I'm actually very okay with that. Mm. And now he. What a great draw. He's got the Skull Beast and the Catacomb as well. Nothing going to be able to um, make it really hard for he Noir. He needs to remove the Albert, though. He, he needs to buff up. Yeah, he definitely does. Play the Catacomb. Trade, get a skeleton, so this make the best out of that situation. Mm -hmm. So he will live another day. What's the top deck? Ooh, it's Luminous a mage. mage. Mage can be tough. You could Subaki this turn and then evolve the knight next turn, giving Subaki five attack points. Mm -hmm. Knowing, I mean, is but Are doing you that is to turn, pass the turn to Hectorox. Right, exactly. What options do you think Noir thinks has in his hand? That's what it comes down to. He still has the Mimi and 12 shadows. But even with the shadows, with maybe like uh, a lot of zombies from an Ector, if you were to draw that next turn, it wouldn't be able to clear out the Tsubaki mm -hmm. because it will have it'll still have ambush. And that five attack damage that it'll have from the Evolved Knight, that, that could be enough to close out this game. Mm -hmm. Take my blade of it's gonna beat Tsubaki. If Actorox can't close the game out here, oh no, <gasps> that's two no, damage, that's not enough. It's not enough, but it'll buff up. It will buff up, yep. And he's got the Mimi as well. Six available. I think it might be I over. I think it's over. Oh, no. We'll see how it plays out, but I, I, yeah, I think that's going to be it. He what can't, a situation. He, he can't attack the Tsubaki. Oh, no. Wow, that ambush is really, really coming in big right now. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> Hey, but Hactorox really played out the situation smartly. He's getting as much board control as he can because he knows that. Oh, the Alwi does too, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, there was more than enough options in the deck. Yeah, it was a matter of time before he drew into Storm, right? Because we mentioned even if he got Novice Trooper in there, mm -hmm. it was just a matter of whether he could play that and then pass the turn, which he did. He played Sabaki and had to pass the turn, and there was not a big enough pu punish in the hand of Hactorox. Right, yeah. So, in that situation, Hactorox falls. Yeah, Noir able to advance to the semifinals with mm -hmm. a 2-0 victory. Mm -hmm. That's I, I feel like we've seen a lot of 2-1s today. The 2-0 seems very rare, but Noir, yeah. very strong. Another Swordcraft deck into the semifinals. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of wraps up our quarterfinals, so we know who the four for today are. The big storyline still to me, of course, is Noah. Let's take a look at the brackets. Still having a run and making a two-time victory having to face some incredibly tough opponents though we've got shadow nexus representing we've got cpv representing we've got crimson fences representing so many big names yeah i love right that here. there's four different teams in yeah. the semifinals for the four players four different teams represented and mana surge is still i mean they're ahead by a bit but if noah secures this win it's gonna be really tough to catch up he's it's gonna boost mana surge's um lead in the in the points mm -hmm. by a significant margin you just think about what is the likelihood that another player can follow in Noah's footsteps, right? Like, how are you going to challenge him for the MVP title if he happens to win first place a second time and gets another 200 points on Two weeks in a row at that. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there should be some win streak bonus that so, we give him. <laughs> we can talk about that, you know, uh, yeah. if you think we should. Send us some feedback. Mm -hmm. 
win streak bonuses, make sure you go to our website, shadowverse.ng.io, to learn how you can participate, get your NG emblem, get all these, uh, again, a chance at winning the tournament, all the prizes available to you, and also a chance of perhaps going to the playoffs. And then you can talk to us. You can communicate on social media, at WatchNG. Go on Twitter. Tell us how much you want to watch Havencraft win um, and whatnot. Also, remember to check in the Twitch panel for giveaway information. 3,500 vials up for grabs. Win that. Get yourself a nice little legendary. I'd like to, again, take this time to remind everybody that NG Shadowverse Open Tournament times are going to be pushed back a little bit. We're going to be starting the tournament at 3 and starting the broadcast at 5. And those will take effect uh, for next week's tournament, week 6. For next week. So make sure you keep up with the uh, the schedule here. Going to be blasted out on Twitter, on Discord, mm -hmm. everywhere on the website. Uh, so make sure you remember. But... With that, the quarterfinals will be wrapped up and we're going to be heading to a little bit of a break before we come back and have the semis.
welcome back to the NGE Shadowverse Open. We're halfway through the halfway tournament. NGE Shadowverse Open number five. We're in the semifinals. Of course, before the semis uh, get rolling here, we have back our wonderful, wonderful guest taking time out of his very, very busy day to join us. Aya Senpai, how are you doing? How has the tournament been so far? I'm doing good. I've been watching the tournament and... I'm glad to see my man on Lucker Dog. Uh, in the <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He's your boy. He's I'm from Lucky Shadow Dog. Nexus. Yeah. How is. you know what? What's interesting to me was I, I was kind of thinking about it a little bit before before the tournament went live, and I was kind of like, ah, oh, you know, I Senpai is a big kind of supporter of Shadow Nexus. It kind of does a lot for them. Um, tell us a little bit about your players and, and kind of what the dynamic is like on, on the Shadow Nexus team. Well, um, team captain, his name is Sleeves of Rain. Uh, he hasn't had a lot of time to uh, enter any tournaments recently, but he does uh, set up a lot of the scrimmaging that happens within the team. Very important. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we have Lux, of course, as you guys know, has mm -hmm. been in uh, these events multiple times. Mm -hmm. uh, Unlucker Dog, Exodium. Um, but the team does a lot of scrimmaging. Uh, they spend several days uh usually uh either wednesdays or sundays or whatever day they have available to get some practice and there's also tim timmy tim tim who's also been uh in these tournaments as well mm -hmm. um what a great name yeah it made me giggle yeah so isn't it though <laughs> um it took me a while to actually be able to say it right because uh all the tims but yeah he's he's actually been doing really well in tournaments recently um because that's also because he puts in the work, a lot of time, a lot of practice. Mm. And again, most of the team does the same. All right. Well, that being said, it's a great overview of Shadow Nexus. Let's take a look at Unlucker, who has made it extremely far in this particular tournament, and take a look at his deck, his Dragoncraft uh, uh, version of the deck, where we actually saw Zeus get to be featured here. Um, and Israfil today has been actually doing a lot of work. Something that we didn't get to see out of his deck was the appearance of Dark Angel Olivia. Aya Senpai, tell us, do you prefer the Dark Angel Olivia kind of uh, Dragoncraft decks where they bring that as an option, or do you prefer something more uh, aggressive, like perhaps Forte, or even something more more kind of gimmicky, like the Imperial Dragoon? What do you feel? Well, back in Rise of Bahamut, when I was playing Ramp Dragon, I actually did play Imperial Dragoon in my list. Uh, it was a great finisher, and it was a very good out-of-nowhere play. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, though, right now, Imperial Dragoon isn't as good because Dragon wants to end the game a lot earlier, if it can. Mm -hmm. um, and you also can't really take the risk uh, when you're fighting in Dragon Mirrors due to the fact that... Um, your opponent's going to be healing a lot. Mm -hmm. So more often than not, the card's just going to be sitting in your hand doing nothing. Right. right. Dragoon is um, only good as a finisher. Right. right. Um, it's only good as a finisher. Back before, there wasn't a lot of healing in Dragon, so you could actually get away with it. Mm -hmm. Now, since you have Sybil and, uh, I mean, we well, already had... Uh, Israfil and whatnot. Draconic Fervor. Now you have yeah. Israfil. Mm -hmm. uh, some decks still run Lucifer. So mm -hmm. since there is a lot of healing... You can't really rely on Imperial Dragoon as a finisher. Mm -hmm. So I understand the Olivia play. The Olivia is to be able to give players the ability to use their Zell combo even after they use all their mm -hmm. uh, evolution points. Mm -hmm. So in the event that the game drags like it tends to do when you're playing Dragon, Olivia mm -hmm. can give you back those evil points that you need to be able to finish your opponent off with first damage. Especially in a Dragon-on-Dragon -on -dragon matchup when the games are, are really going into the later mm -hmm. stages, way past mm -hmm. 10 play orbs. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's take a look at uh, Unlocker's opponent, Noah. This will be MS Noah's Shadowcraft deck. So this is his opponent's deck, and this was very, very successful. Of course, Shadowcraft is probably the top performing deck of the meta right now. And uh, right. kind of looking over it, there isn't anything super interesting. I mean, time and time again, we see Shadow Reaper, Catacomb, Ector, right? These are the linchpins of the Shadowcraft deck. Maybe, Aya Senpai, you could, from your experience, talk to us a little bit about Immortal Thane and kind of how it fits in that picture, because we've actually seen it a lot more and more as the tournaments have been running. Well, the thing about Immortal Thane is that um, there are going to be times where you just can't play Ektar. Like, say, for instance, 
uh, you, you have a clear board, or it is a clear board. You don't really want to play Ektar on a clear board unless you know that your opponent can't deal with it. Hmm. So Immortal Thane is actually a really good card to be played on those types of turn where uh, there's really nothing you can do. Plus the deck also does a lot of shadow generation. So being able to play the White King afterwards is really good as well. Um, something else that's really good about Immortal Thane is the fact that he summons the two whites. Yes. The two whites are actually the most important thing of the Immortal Thane because it can, on its own, make it really difficult, uh, place your opponent in very difficult positions uh, to decide what they're, what they're going to kill, if they're even going to kill anything, because mm. again, they take damage from the whites. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's a little rough when you're um, facing down an Immortal Thane because... Mm -hmm. um, at first, a lot of people weren't running it, but now it's starting to kind of squeeze its way in the decks, and it's actually becoming more of a staple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I expect to see that represent in this particular matchup between Noah and Lucker. Okay, after taking a look at each of uh, of one of their decks of the two, mm -hmm. um, I want to take a moment, and as we have Aya Senpai joining, joining us again here, I want to take a moment to talk about this announcement that was released by Shadowverse itself for just a little bit, Momocon. And of course, the very, the very special Aya Senpai will be joining us down there, uh, Sterling and myself, alongside Aya Senpai and Envy Bear, will be at Momocon to kind of meet you guys, to play some Shadowverse, kind of hang out at the booth, give out some swag. It's going to be really, really fun. And Aya Senpai, I, I'm super excited to actually we have a main stage feature between you and Envy Bear to play off against each other. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, some take two matches and kind of talk about the game. I think it's going to be really fun. Uh, are you, I I feel like it's such an exciting event. I'm really happy, looking forward to seeing you at that uh, particular event, Aya Senpai. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to about that event? I actually, uh, while I am looking forward to playing on the big stage and you know getting to talk about Shadowverse, I'm actually looking forward to meeting a lot of people in the community itself mm -hmm. to see the type of stuff that they want to see within the Shadowverse community. That is what I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. One of the things too, to remember is we'll be all day at the booths to kind of meet you guys and hang out in the main stage event. But every night at Momocon, we're going to have a 64 player Shadowverse tournament that you can enter. And there's a bunch of prizes to be won. Yeah, some really cool but, swag. Some unique items as well. Like there's, I think there's a, there's a. But here's the kicker. Okay. Yeah. The first place winner, Aya Senpai, Sterling. The first place winner, gets a bell ringer angel alarm clock. I want one of those. I feel like I'm going to wear a mask and enter the tournament and try to win it myself. I don't think I think you need more than a mask. You probably need a new social security number, a new driver's license, a haircut, probably. All right. Well, Aya Senpai, we're about to jump into the first semis match. Would you care to join us again? But when the next finals comes on to look at their opponent's decks, we would love to have you. Uh, if that's Absolutely. something that you would be able to do. Absolutely. Great. So we will have Aya Senpai reconnecting with us after we watch this incredible series between Noah and Unlucker. And we'll be getting underway real shortly. Now, while we're waiting for that to spin up, I just want to take the time to remind everybody that you can join the Shadowverse Open at shadowverse.nge.io, our website. You can find out tons of information there about the Shadowverse Open. Very excited, of course, about all the things heading down uh, the pathway. And uh, with that, let's see who will move on to the finals here and have a chance. Is it going to be Noah for the repeat victory? I got to say, man, I'm rooting for Noah. How You're cool would Noah? that be? I mean, like... I except I was just here, man. He was just talking about his boy. I know, but I mean, Noah's my boy, you know? What the <laughs> heck? What the heck? I, I feel like I am compelled now more than ever to go for Shadow Nexus's Unlucker. <laughs> All right, Unlucker. Best of luck, buddy. <laughs> best of luck, Unlucker. <laughs> mm. And it's gonna be the the Shadow Mirror matchup. We just saw one yeah. earlier today. Oh yeah, and he's and Bison. I'm so happy. Mm. Look at look at how upset he is. He does not look happy. There's this habit for Shadowcraft. You see, both Luna and, and Bison like are holding their arms really close to their body. Mm. You know, yeah. they feel the need to to have something in between their arms. Maybe they just need a little bit of love. And Bison yeah. looks like my football coach in high school. <laughs> Not a not a happy guy. <laughs> really, just angry all the time. 
Hey, good opening for Noah. Yep. Skullby's got the early zombie party, and this time it's a situation where he has a follower on the board to kind of challenge. Um, Catacomb, not the turn three play, has to play Grimner, and that's actually going to slow down Noah just a little bit. Yeah, it is going to slow him down, but it's going to give Noah the chance um, to get a lot of other followers on his side of the field. Ideally, he would love to have the Catacomb here because the Catacomb is a turn four Reaper. It's kind of mm -hmm. the biggest play to have. Yeah. You ensure that you have skeletons on the field and the Reaper gets pumped up at least twice. Yeah. And when you've got a ward to attack into, I mean, that that's even greater if you've got a lurching corpse, for example, someone who can only attack someone with a ward and get uh, massive value off of that. But he's going to go with the Reaper this turn. The interesting thing about this situation is uh, because Noah is coming in on the second turn, he's going to be able to evolve and kind of have more combat interactions here. Right, but that's that's now three followers with some oh, that are going to be God. summoning skeletons. In an awkward scenario, he gets the second Shadow Reaper a turn after. Lyril is going to be able to take down a, a little bit of this, but mm -hmm. the triple last word effect is, is really going to gum things up here. Yeah. It's definitely a lot of wind in the sails for Unlucker. All right. Skeleton, skeleton. Ooh, he's going to use a Shadow Reaper to just kind of trade out and get board control. Yeah, if, you, if you've got them this early in the game, it, I think it makes sense to, to try to trade and try to get some momentum in your favor. Mm -hmm. I think the key thing here is kind of leveraging the second Shadow Reaper to really make a big kind of play. Mm. Taking down the Lyrial with the Soul Squasher is going to be important, but pushing down his Shadow Count. Evolving the Skull Beast is just going to give Noah's Soul Squasher another target this turn. Ambush fades, and we find ourselves in a five play point situation where maybe Soul Squasher Grimner is a play to go for. Mm -hmm. There's still so much board control inside of Unlocker. Of course, no more catacombs on the field, but the Bone Chimera is still there to kind of maintain. And because shadows were, were expended, there's two cards in hand for Unlocker that are very shadow reliant. You got Phantom Hell and Death's Breath. Right. So kind of an awkward situation, to be honest. Two cards in hand, and neither of them are particularly stellar. Mm -hmm. We'll see what his next draw is going to be here, but um, oh. you mentioned it when you said they're both uh, shadow reliant. He, he could have enough shadows this turn to get a, a full effect from Death's Breath, mm -hmm. um, but then those are six shadows that are gone. And s I mean, then you're gonna have to work up to those five shadows where you're really making the most out of your Phantom Howl. So having, it's interesting, he doesn't want to play the Shadow Reaper here, otherwise he would have put the Shadow Reaper before trading. Mm -hmm. That's definitely an interesting line of play. He's gonna evolve to get rid of the Shadow Reaper on the side of Noah. And giving play Death's Breath. Just the amount of shadows he needed. Yeah. We're at turn six here, of course far way away from Grimmer being able to just swipe the board away. Mm -hmm. Orthrus. Still a very awkward situation. Mm -hmm. I'll show you. Yeah, for Noah, he's got a, a steep hill to climb up with this board that's got to be cleared, and that's his last evolve point going over um, for that Orthrus. Mm -hmm. Orthrus will, will maintain on the board, which I think is kind of important. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to respect the reach that Unlucker has. Meanwhile, just trying to build up enough shadows. Ooh, that's that's a good time to put that down. And soul conversion, great. Gonna get some draw, gonna get some more options. Two sergeants. Mm -hmm. And the more cards he drops down, the Ector is gonna be great in some senses, but you're gonna wanna trade for board control, and in doing so, you're making the Shadow Reaper stronger. He does have an immortal thing, just through that this turn. He's gonna go with the Ector. Um, gonna get two zombies on his side of the field. Really great board control. Mm -hmm. And of course, Orthrus getting buffed up as well. Yeah. Watch that Shadow Reaper get pumped up. Now it's still a pretty okay trade because for every card you're taking down, Unlucker is losing one damage because you're trading out the two and buffing up the Shadow Reaper one. Mm. Another reason why double Shadow Reaper is so strong because you trade out a two, it actually is the same thing, right? Right. Or you trade out a one damage card and they're actually gaining power. So mm -hmm. not the most awkward situation for Noah, but now he has to deal with a 5-5 five, five Shadow Reaper and there are more cards in hand on Unlucker's side. And Noah had the 5-2 Orthrus, and he traded that into um, the Sergeant when he could have gone for a 5 face damage. But I think he knows that Unlocker, he only had one card in his hand, and he just drew a second card. Mm -hmm. So he knows that Unlocker is is running out of options. But Unlocker, he's, he's just going to go for full face damage. Mm -hmm. And it's very scary, because Phantom mm -hmm. Hal next turn, if the Shadow Reaper maintains, is going to close it out. He's going to go for it now. It's not enough to close out the game, and he's really exhausting all of his options. 
Yeah. I think he's really putting himself in a situation where he can uh, force Noah to make decisions to board clear uh -huh. over anything else. Right. He's got enough shadows, Unlucker has. So next turn, if he, if he draws... Um, he's forced to trade yeah. for Ector into the Shadow Reaper. Oh, but that's a Cerberus. That's going to that's gonna be massive. But he's, he's, he's got... You're right. He's got to clear the board. He's forcing Noah into a position where he has to trade his followers mm -hmm. to clear the board. And really, I think it comes down to a top deck situation, mm -hmm. right? Cerberus will be able to clear the board completely if you throw your Ector away. Right. Um, but in doing so, you will not be able to play a ward, which could be valuable to Noah in this scenario. Right, 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 right. The so top deck is very important at this stage. Cyclone. He's got to play the ward. Time to go a little while. So he's just going to leave two damage on the board here. If Unlocker draws Ector, it's over. Yep. Let's see. <gasps> oh, Ooh, zombie mm. party. Still very dangerous. Yeah. Right. Getting a full board Even and some more here. face damage. Oh my gosh. I don't. I don't think Noah's going to be able to take this. Okay, that's another zombie party, but still, it's not going to be helpful. It's not going to be helpful. There's, there's, there's no wards. There's no healing available. He has to be able to clear. Try to get a few extra shadows here. And there's no evolve point. He, he he's not going to be able to get the White King. He's not going to be able to get the ward with Bane. He can't kill off his his Cerberus as well. Yeah. Here it it comes. Take. Just two health left. Oh. Hmm. Well, that's going to effectively clear the board. Yeah. And I mean, if if Unlocker doesn't draw a good card here, the situation could turn on its on on his head real quick, right? Absolutely. Oh, oh no. no. You know you hate. To see this kind of thing happen, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you you really really hate to see this kind of thing happen. Still, uh, I don't think Noah's going to be able to finish the game. He's not out in the clear yet. This turn, right? Right. Getting a ward is still very important. Zombie party will wipe the board, but there is no guaranteed protection against any kind of face damage coming in. If there's another Phantom Howl, he's done. Mm -hmm. Right. Almost anything. It's going to oh, be That's game. God. That's game. Oh my gosh. The animated one as well. Oh, to finish off the Why series. Why do you have to be so mad all the time, Mimi? Oh my gosh. I I can't believe it. The top deck came in big here. And the top deck Cerberus at that. Unlucker? Really? Really getting lucky. Oh my <laughs> he gosh. He kind of lucked out in that situation. <laughs> so we have yet again Coco and Mimi to save the day. I can't. They're probably very proud of themselves. It's just, it's so cute. I'm not, I can't handle it. I hate it. It's very adorable. Whenever I take naps in the office, I cuddle with them. That's, I'm taking it off right now. That's, <laughs> that's TMI, man. <laughs> it doesn't actually happen. I promise. <laughs> just to clarify. It doesn't, just to it, clarify, it doesn't, doesn't actually happen. happen. There I'm are not no naps weird. here. No <laughs> naps can be had. Unlucker takes the first game off the server's top deck in a situation where it was incredibly close. Mother, and I mean, Father. the interesting part about that is no amount of wards would have saved them from that scenario, mm -hmm. right? It was That's, direct yep. damage, and so there was actually a, a very tough spot for Noah to be in. Good decision to push him to that point in terms of, in terms of health level, forcing mm -hmm. the scenario out onto yep. Noah. Mm -hmm. But what a risk to take, you know? Yeah. What a risk to take. It was a risk to take, and it paid off. Unlocker might have to change his name. We'll see. If he'll change his name a second time in this game, it's going to be Dragon against Noah's Shadow deck. He's staying with the deck. I think he feels like he, he, he I think he definitely has the advantage um, with this matchup, but he didn't have um, a one drop, and he's going second at that. I think that's going to be um, mm -hmm. uh, a massive advantage kind of lost for the Shadow deck. Outlet coming down. Uh -huh. Obviously, quite a strong card. Just the threat that it poses and how your opponents have to kind of try to play around it. Yeah, and Unlocker was already going first. He already has the play point advantage. And he's going to be able to, to ramp that up even more, getting and even remember, a more significant advantage. Unlocker's deck has Dark Angel Olivia. In That's it. right. That's right. Here comes a ramp. <clears throat> Two damage to the Lyril. Soul Squash gets taken out. It's already going to be an overflow next oh, turn. Oh, my man. gosh. That, that's going to be one... 
That's that's going to be a, a Sahak wheel Eastward fill combo right there. Mm -hmm. So no matter what board Noah sends out, well, he could uh, summon the Lurching Corpse. That would be nasty. Yeah. Definitely playing the odds if he decides to go for that Sahak wheel Eastward fill combo. Mm -hmm. And if you play Rahab you're, or, or uh, Grimnir, you're just giving a ward that the Lurching Corpse can attack into. Yeah. And Unlucker, he's not even going to take a turn. He knows That's he's... actually interesting, because mm -hmm. you have to deal with that Lurching Corpse anyways. Right, 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 right. right. You're going to have to face your fears eventually. I would have imagined he would want to do it on his own terms. Still an interesting play. Noah's got to be... I don't know what could be going through Noah's mind after seeing that. Your Dragoncraft opponent has oh five boy. cards in his hand, and he doesn't go for anything. This is... I, <laughs> I kind of like this line of play here, because... You both don't want to kill a Lurching Corpse, but then you're just leaving five damage to just happen again yeah, and again and again. that's a real so, beefy follower. Pushing the issue. The Olivia is here, but you haven't spent a single Evolution Orb. How are you going to get rid of this thing? How are you going to fix this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Unlucker. I've received complaints about the Lurching Corpse. Mm -hmm. How are you going to fix this? The Rahab is going to be the play. Kind of... The Lurching Corpse already has the amount of attack damage it needs to just destroy the, the Rob. Okay. Smart option here is to clear the Orthros first. Mm -hmm. There it is. Now you deal with that. And it guaranteed that Rahab Rahab was gonna off. Yep. Rahab was gonna die anyway if you left it up. Yep, yep. And so he has to face that situation. He could have done that a play point earlier, mm -hmm. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Just getting the zombies. I think he's he really wants to set up for that Ector play next turn. So I think the play might be, it's, it's hard, right? Because while you can, you kind of want to push the Angel Olivia out because it doesn't necessarily give you the impact that you would want. But Israfil Evolve will wipe out all the, wom uh, all the wombies, all the zombies, and, and leave Israfil at, at pristine condition. Right. He's gonna, I think he's going to Sahakwil the Israfil. That's going to completely clear off those zombies. Mm. And you've still got Israfil in another turn if you want to heal for that four. So does he evolve here? And then Angel. Looks like he's going to opt to skip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the whites are out. So a tricky Bahamut play next turn. If he wants to play that, you're just uh, you're giving the, the White King uh, in the hand of Noah. But again, the Shadows, he's got eight of them. That's going to be four Shadows going over to the White King if he summons that. I think the pressure of having Bahama on the field is, is good enough to play it. Yeah, I think you're right. You're going to have to spend some options here to, to try to remove, and you still have got Isafil Evolve. Right, and if you want to spend your last Evolve point on the White King, that would that would get rid of um, Bahamut, and you still got that, and it's a zero-cost follower. That's the thing. You can still play Serpers that turn as well mm -hmm. if you want to try to get Coco and Mimi in your hand. But the longer you delay the game by clearing out these followers, you're just, as a Shadow player against Dragon, you're giving Dragon the time it needs to draw the cards and get more and more options to close out this game. Yeah. Now, remember... <coughs> excuse me. Shadowcraft actually has a lot of reach, right? Especially with the Evolution Orb remaining. Mm -hmm. May death be majestic. So the question is, does he want to spend that orb to try to guarantee wipe out the Bahama, or does he want to play into the next turn mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. risk losing the followers? And he's, he's not going to take the risk. He's just going to evolve and be rid of that problem now. Right. But Unlucker, we saw his deck. I mean, he he, he, he could have another Bahamut. He, uh, he could draw another Bahamut next turn. Yep. And that would definitely hamper the, the ability for Noah to, to kind of gain any footing in the late end. Right. Shadowcraft tends to have board control early on, but... It can be tough when Dragoncraft is just constantly playing these heavy hitters, Israfil, Bahamut, just mm -hmm. over and over again. Yeah. Oracle is not going to be too useful. Basically, card draw here. Here comes another big removal. Grimner down. Yeah, the name of the game for Dragon at this stage is board clear, board clear, board clear. Do not want to leave a single follower that could go for face with an Ector. Mm -hmm. Especially when, you, when you're at the nine play point stage Ooh. and your opponent has had soul conversions and they've drawn up until that point. But again, this is a situation where now you have to deal with uh, Israfil Evolve. So I actually kind of really like that choice to use the uh, Soul Conversion there. Because mm -hmm. these zombies, two health is not valuable in the grand scheme of things. Oh, the lightning blast down. Mm -hmm. This is really tough. An animated one at that. 
Basically, the fact that the Lightning Blast is there, Noah wouldn't know it, but basically forces him to clear every single turn, because if he leaves a card up, Lightning Blast plus the card coming in, yep. it's going to basically end the match. The four health healing there, there's and the Evolve. And I think Noah knows that. Like, a, a Bahamut followed by a Lightning Blast that the Bahamut isn't killed is a, is a, a staple. Mm -hmm. Ever closer to the point where Israfil will just end the match by mm -hmm. swinging 10 and then the two AoE damage. So he needs to clear it out. And he and he can't really ward up either. Mm -mm. No, th there's wards. Uh, it's not going to help that much. I mean, East for Phil can just chew through wards still. The zombies went from the death's breath with three health. I mean, the two damage from East is not going to kill them all. But this damage from this zombies definitely will. Yeah. Yeah. So he's going to get away from this situation here. And Lightning Blast is, is good in this situation because you can get rid of that Shadow Reaper without having it buff up too much. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's something valuable enough for Unlucker here to, to execute. Right. Yep. There it is. Passes the turn over. Yep. There's still a good amount of cards in hand for Noah. Mm -hmm. Still got plenty of options. He's got Cerberus as well as a Mimi. Yeah. And I think the big thing here is there's no good storm options right now for Unlucker. That's right. And so based on how this next two turns go, Noah could finally be swinging around here. Sahak. He's going to go with the Olivia. Yeah. With a massive board on the hand for Noah, that's a huge risk that Unlucker is taking. Mm -hmm. Olivia is going to be able to wipe out one of the wards. Right. And you still got uh, a follower with six attack on your side of the field. So that's going to leave five damage out from followers here. Mm -hmm. You've got Mimi for the seven, and you've got Cerberus to play to give you another four. Mm -hmm. It's not a ton of reach. Oh, this is a good draw. Oh, that's great. Olivia's got exactly four health. Yep. That's absolutely stellar. And another two, three Why war that Unlucker is going to have to chew through. You. Yep. You're still holding on to a lot of options in your hand. Mm -hmm. This would be a comeback if I've ever seen it. Yes. Yes, it would. Getting real low now, and that's reach that's very doable for Shadowcraft, especially with another Cerberus in hand. Four direct damage. Right. And there's the Zell. And um, if a follower could swing at all, that probably will close out the game. Something needs to happen right now. There's a lot of ward on the table for, for Noah, too. Unlucker. Maybe Sybil is the play to try to extend your life. Sybil and Sybil Rahab. Rahab. Yeah, get a ward, get some healing as well. And you still got this, those other two Evolve points left over from the Olivia. Here it comes. But there's still the, the zombies and the Bone Chimera as well that's going to summon two skeletons when it dies. Yes. That's really important right now. Maintaining board control that Noah fought so hard mm -hmm. to get the Lightning Blast. Would have been the end of it all had Noah not been kind of playing as conservative as he did. So he's going to heal for three at the end of this turn. Is this lethal for Noah? He doesn't have a ward. Unlocker doesn't have a ward. So he's got six damage from cards. Uh -huh. He's got nine. Not quite. Okay, he's looking. He's looking for something. Not quite. Not quite. Yeah, not quite. I think he wants to go for. Um Get those extra skeletons for a, a catacomb by yeah. this turn as well. Yeah, he, he went for it. It would have been a fantastic play had he drawn the option to help close it out, mm -hmm. but not quite. And now I think he, he's really invested in clearing the board at this point. I think your ward is very valuable. Mm -hmm. You kind of want to keep Grimner alive if you can. It mitigates at least one attack that's going to be coming out with a, if there's an Evolve follower you with can Rush from Unlocker. Zombie Party and Mimi. What are you hiding inside? Or you could trade Grimner. Could do an extra four damage, leaving Unlucker with six health. But if you leave the Sybil up, he's just going to keep healing, and that Sybil is going to get some absolute value out of it. Yeah. Yeah. You would definitely want to mitigate the healing. Israfil is going to come down again and clear the board as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then you're going to get the skeletons. He's going to go for face. That. So it, it, Israfil... Is so Israfil mm -hmm. Evolve will do two, then you can swing eight. It's it, and then if he, But if he does that, then Noah's going to win the game because he's going to have the skeletons. He's going to have the skeletons, yeah. he's got two Mimis in his hand. But he's going to heal from Sybil as well as Israfil. Right. So Sybil will heal three and Israfil heals four on drop. He's going to be up to... Fighting is so sorrowful. 
before. There's the skeletons and one more to join. And he's going to be able to get rid of. Uh, Fight with all I've got. And oh, that's game. Thing, that's, that's game the right there. Here is he used the hawk wheel to pull the Israfil, so he didn't get the healing, and he got rid of and the wards. Got, yep, and he evolved up and was able to to remove Grimner and get the killing blow there. And that's going to be Unlucker uh, advancing to the finals. Stops Noah dead in his tracks, and and what a situation to be in, right? You tried your Shadowcraft deck twice, mm -hmm. and in both situations, the early game didn't quite go the way that you wanted it to. Right. And Noah had to even fight to get himself into a situation where he could have potentially even taken the match. And then Unlucker was able to kind of secure that at the end with mm -hmm. the Israfil draw, I think, was really, really important there. Yeah. The Sahakwil was looking actually really dead mm -hmm. um, until that Israfil. Yeah, when up. you don't have that follower to use with Sahakwil's, mm -hmm. I mean, Sahakwil's kind of a useless card. Mm -hmm. It's a seven drop for four attack, four defense. Mm -hmm. But. Like you said, he was able to get that Acer Phil yeah. and close out the game. Yeah. Acer Phil has been showing off this tournament, really. Let's take a look at the bracket and uh, see their, our situation as it stands now. Unlucker will move on to the finals. And we've still got Stoles versus Noor coming up. And we'll have Aya Senpai joining, joining us again to kind of talk about both the previous match as well as looking forward to this match between the two players. Um, when we previously saw Stoles play and Nor play, it really felt like they were kind of... We, we have kind of another situation where there's a Shadow Sword and a Dragon, dragon Shadow, right. I believe. Mm -hmm. In the upper end of the, of the bracket, uh, we didn't even get to see the Swordcraft play because Shadow actually lost twice. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if that's different in this case. Um, just would love to double check here. Aya Senpai, I'm here. how do you feel? How does that make you feel? That last match. How does that make you feel? <laughs> well, I'm certainly proud mm -hmm. that we are once again in the finals. You see, uh, here's here's <laughs> what I would say, right? Sterling tried to go against you. He tried to go yeah, against. Yeah, I heard. You. Yeah. Oh, you were there. <laughs> he was there. Yep. He, his, he was muted, but so he couldn't uh, couldn't rebuttal. But he heard me. Yeah. See, yeah, I, I had faith. <laughs> I had faith. Let's take a let's take a look at the the decks that these two players will be uh will will be fielding here, and we're taking a look at Stolz's Dragoncraft deck. So we've already seen a Dragoncraft deck here. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at some of the differences. Most notably, Dark Angel Olivia is missing, and uh, ISFI, you spoke to this a little bit. I don't think we need to really rehash this. This is obviously the Ouroboros version of the Dragoncraft deck, which interestingly enough, we haven't seen a lot of Ouroboros in this tournament. It's mostly been about Israfil. It's mostly been about I really just Israfil in combination with Sahakwil and Zell. Yeah, um so there are some dragon lists that when they're running Sahakwil they tend not to run Ouroboros. Um I'm not entirely sure the reason why though, so I wouldn't exactly be the best person to ask, but uh as I do not play dragon. However, uh that has been a thing among my team that uh, they've been kind of messing around with Ouroboros numbers between 0 and 3. Uh, if they go Sahakuyo and they don't play Ouroboros, they may try Lucifer in its place just for more life gain. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, but I'm not entirely sure of the reason why um, the the number of Ouroboroses go in and out with the deck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, of course, Ouroboros, I think, in many ways, is one of the best cards that you can play in combination with Wind Reader Zell. But it's a little different, yeah. right? Because a Sahak Zell combo is actually that one play point cheaper than an Ouroboros Zell combo. So it, instead of it being incredibly effective, uh, it, well, aside from it being incredibly effective, it is that one play point more expensive, which can, which can make all the difference. Um, let's take a look at Nor's Swordcraft deck. Now, this is one that I would love to hear your thoughts on, just because Swordcraft is, is such a... I think it's kind of the one archetype that's trying to push its way through and convince people that it, it's here to stay and it's part of the meta. Tell us mm -hmm. why you think that might be. Well, first and foremost, the thing about Sword is that Sword has everything it needs to be a very strong deck. It has Tsubaki that can help fight against Dragon. It has a very good Storm followers and uh, Alwita's Command, Albert, and Novice Trooper. I see that his list ten is running uh, two Novice Troopers, which traditionally there's three. Um, I would imagine that the Novice Trooper was there to make room for Simone. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, the minus one uh, of the um, because he's only running two novice troopers, right, so right. the Simone would be the third slot. Yeah. Um, but and he's running two Fang Blade Slayer. Most decks tend to run one, but he's running two. Mm -hmm. uh, Fang Blade Slayer is a very good card in this yes. current meta against Dragon and whatnot. It can be a good finisher. And it can take out a Bahamut or anything else that they need to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Also, something else that it can do is it can kind of uh, mitigate Ouroboros damage. So if like you need to ram it into Ouroboros, they still take three, but they gain three, so mm -hmm. they don't really gain anything. Mm -hmm. So a bit of a stalemate uh, there. Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit of a stalemate. So it can be used in that fashion as well. Mm -hmm. I certainly compared to the situation where if you were to run a normal card into Ouroboros, it would just gain three, and that would be the end of the story. Mm -hmm. I right. mean, in many ways, it's kind of in the favor of a Swordcraft player imagining the worst-case situation that would happen. Right? And if you evolve the Fangblade Slayer um, and attack Ouroboros, it's, the Fangblade Slayer is still going to be on the field. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Ouroboros yeah. is going to heal, it's gonna, and he's going to take five damage as well. And is that heal true? For only Fangblade three. is... It eight? has eight defense. Eight defense? Goes up yeah. to ten defense it's real, with the It's yeah. real beefy. Yeah. 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 Three, eight, I believe it is. Um, but, yeah, that's that's really interesting to know. So, now that you have Unlucker in the finals, Aya Senpai, between mm -hmm. Stoles and Nor, who do you think you would prefer making it through? Would it be the Swordcraft deck or would it be the Dragon Shadow? Well, in this, I'm going to be completely biased. Mm -hmm. um, and this is no offense to Crimson Fencers, but I don't want them in the finals. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> reasonably so oh boy we've got the gauntlet uh, that's being so, thrown down so i'm i'm rooting for stoles on this one great well we'll see how the uh, match ends up playing out and uh, again as always thank you is senpai for your insight and your thoughts on 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 the decks and kind of their properties always a joy to hear from from a player that's well known in the community and kind of deeply embedded in, in the game um nor versus stoles so, Nor, I feel like, Sterling, has kind of really been very active in a lot of tournaments. You see Nor everywhere, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. And Stoles, I feel like, in the, in the similar fashion, but I wonder if, if kind of that experience is going to play into Nor's favor here. In fact, I don't actually, now that I think about it, I would love to know more of the history of Stoles and, and figure out how veteran uh, Stoles is. You've seen him before. I'm sure both players have plenty of experience. They've made it this far to the semifinals. Noir this versus Stoltz. We'll see who is going to advance to the finals and face Come Unlucker. Come on. Dragon versus Shadow. Looks like Nord's going to put the Swordcraft deck in the back pocket right now, which is interesting because... In the Conquest format, you tend to want to play your counter deck, mm -hmm. quote-unquote, the deck that you think is kind of more reliant on getting the matchup that you want. You want to play that deck first hmm. because it guarantees you to get that match if you lose because you happen to play against a deck that it didn't counter. Hmm. Then the next round, you can make sure you hit that matchup. Right, so then if you lose, you can still choose which deck you want to play into the matchup you know you're going up against. Yep. Yep. So... Just an interesting look into kind of the philosophy here of, of how Nor is breaking out his decks. Got the Bone Chimera down, and that's actually a really great turn three play. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to help the Shadow Reaper get installed on turn four. Yeah, definitely, especially when um, the Dragon player uses a Blazing Breath to clear up the Sergeant, and you don't have you don't and you don't have Catacomb in your hand anyway. But uh, that would have been definitely the play um, if he did have Catacomb <laughs> in his hand. But um, getting the uh, the Chimera in his hand. Uh, it's crucial because um, Aelia cannot trade into it and uh, be killed next turn uh, to gain that extra play orb. Um, it's going to have to attack twice. Yeah. Yeah. It's certainly an interesting dynamic. Aela really wants to ramp for the Dragoncraft player, but having that pinging one damage is going to help it mm -hmm. kind of delay that for another turn. That's really important because that extra turn might make all the difference here. <coughs> And Stoltz does have a Dragon Oracle in hand. He's going to be able to ramp this turn. And with an Evolved Zell as well, gain a lot of pressure on the board, but that's just going to be reaping up the re uh, uh, stacking up the Reaper as well. What's interesting here is ramping, in terms of ramping, there's a very clear line that, that Stoltz can take, right? Mm -hmm. He's got Oracle, and he can definitely do Sybil, and so there's a lot of play points that are up for grabs, really. Hmm. He played... Both his zells. He really wants that tempo. Mm -hmm. 
um, for this stage in the game. I've never seen a line of play quite like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the double Zell, but perhaps he just identifies that against Shadowcraft. It's a very dangerous situation. He got a second Shadow Reaper, which can get really bad here. I have no regrets. <clears throat> question is you really want to swing face but do you leave the unevolved zell up right, right. for uh, a six cost follower coming out next turn that's going to be able to gain storm if you evolve the zell mm -hmm. and of course um the zell could just trade into the reaper next turn as well for a perfect four four trade yep so i think the warren's deciding whether or not he plays the shadow reaper he's going to go with that Gonna evolve it, leave it at one. No, he, he opts to choose phase, hmm. leaves a Zell on the board. I guess he, he was worried about the enhanced um, Breath of the Salamander. So that was a man for Stoltz. Yep. Some healing is gonna come out here. If the Sybil gets evolved, then that gives now. it the target. Nope. Gonna do the Zell to give Storm, mm -hmm. which is smart because the Soul Squasher could have very easily just handled the, uh, the Sybil. And now he needs to find one damage from somewhere. Yep. Three points of healing definitely coming in clutch. But oh, that's Death's Breath for Noir. He's going to... Man, I mean, and, and with the Evolve Zombie being able to train into Sybil. Hmm. Another four damage coming to face. The healing did a lot for Stoles. Mm -hmm. And there's still more healing to come with another Sybil that he's been drawn. But he's got two Sahak wheels in his hand. Unfortunate enough. But, oh, there's the Ace Refill. Just the combo he needed uh, for next turn. But like you mentioned, he, he played both Zells. Um, for tempo, I, I mean, I, th I think that was a right call. And, I mean, in this game, he really needed that that advantage of having early timing followers on the board important. and timing. Yeah, mm -hmm. but he still has uh, the Ace Refill with the Hawk Wheel to to rush, deal damage to all the followers on the board, and tough then play situation. it again next turn if he wants to heal. Yeah, mm -hmm. very tough situation. He has the AoE Lightning Blast next turn. He mm -hmm. could partially mitigate damage this turn by playing Lightning Blast early, but if he feels like he could weather the storm and but take the, one hit... But there's an Ector coming out mm -hmm. uh, next turn from Noir. That's really the, the risk that Stoles is playing around here. Mm -hmm. Time to say goodbye. A dance to make the world blue. Gonna maintain as many of his followers on board here, but pumping up the Shadow Reaper. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's gonna buff even two more after this, but the healing again. Mm -hmm. Gonna keep Salt alive. Now, is he gonna Soul Squasher it? He's going to choose to go for Ector. Mm. And this might be because he wants to pump up the Shadow Reaper at the same time even more. Mm. Must come to an that's that's going to be 13 Stop. damage to face right there. Leaving Stoltz with only 5 health. And the Ector is available on board. There's a Lightning Blast to dispel the situation, but it's going to be a pass. And as we know, there's and a lot of opportunity to chew damage to face. And there's, the, there's a Cerberus oh. in hand for Noir. He's going to be able to He's going to be able to do a lot of damage this turn, getting Coco and Mimi in his hand. And if he wants to, he can he can Soul Squasher the Zell, completely clearing the board of Stoltz. Yeah. He has that option available. Mm -hmm. He would have really preferred something other than the Skull Beast. Right, definitely. Especially against the Israfil that can uh, gain Rush from Sahakuel. And the only followers in Noir's hand have two defense. Which, if he plays them now, um, they're going to be absolutely destroyed by the Userfill next turn. The only saving grace is that he'll gain a lot of shadows off of it. Right. That's, right, right, that's right. the biggest saving grace. But, but really what, are sh what are is, shadows when your health is at zero? Yeah. The biggest problem here is that Userfill coming down will give another kind of influx of healing for Stoles. That's right. But if he decides to play it without the Sahak Whale, you gain the healing. Uh, nine health, he'll, he'll be at. Um, but then Ace Rafael can attack that that turn, mm -hmm. and then you run the risk that that your Shadowcraft opponent is going to draw a Phantom Howl or another Ector, mm -hmm. and be able to finish off the game that way. So he opts to spend Mimi on the Zell mm -hmm. and passes. Mm. Holds Coco Draconic Fervor as well. He's going to try to draw options. Oh. Mm. God. Oracle into Oracle. And uh, doesn't want to take any more risks. Mm -hmm. Just going to go for the Sahak play. Does two to face. 
Not the worst. Now, can he survive this? Oh. Yes. Yes, he can. Oh, man, the third Skull Beast. Definitely not one to see when, you, when you're on... Uh, Nine and this situation gets really yeah. dangerous, right? Because Sahad can bring in Israfil again, and you can swing for four. It's going to give you six damage to face and wipe the board. So and that's just yeah, then you've got Zeus as well for five. I think that I think I mean that I think that's going to end the game. I think Stoltz is going to be able to take this with the Zeus in his hand. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, and he drew into Grimner as well. Something big needs to happen this turn. This is the last chance here. Mm. Oh boy. Oh boy. Mm. Nor got pushed out of options. Three draws in a row. What was it? Skull Beast? Uh, at, at the nine play orbs, he had three yeah. Skull Beasts in his yeah. hand. Yeah. Skull yeah. Beast, and then he got. He did have yeah. the Cerberus, and, and I mean, that, that was definitely one of the tools he needed, but it wasn't. It was just one piece of the puzzle. He wasn't able to get those other pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so. Stoles will push on and uh, gain one in favor of him uh, kind of having a good seat to move on to the finals here to face off against Unlucker. And it seems like the machinations of Aya Senpai may be coming true here. Mm -hmm. We'll see if he Stoles... Says he does not want to see Crimson Fencers be successful. So instead, he will go for the opponent. So we'll see if the Shadow, shadow Mirror matchup is... It's gonna go in favor of Noir or Stoltz. If Stoltz takes us, he's going to the finals and is gonna is gonna is gonna face Unlucker. Mm -hmm. Double catacomb with a Shadow Reaper to boot. Mm. So that's a very strong mid game, but I think he needs a few more cards surrounding it to really make that play make sense. Oh, and that's Stoltz with the one, two, three with the catacomb. Yeah. Absolutely stellar drop. Stoltz's hands. Oh boy. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Oh no, man. Stoltz could run away with this. Yeah, he Stoltz very is easily. getting some very good cards in his hand too, in a good order as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> oh no! So he's going to guarantee to have a skeleton for double Shadow Reaper, right? And then he's going to be able to play the Catacomb here. It just all comes down. The big problem is that Nor went first, so he's not going to be able to use Evolve to continue buffing up his Shadow Reaper. It's going to be a little bit awkward. Mm. But let's see if he does he opt to play the bone chimera here. No, it looks like he's just gonna think, go for double shadow reaper. I think right that's his, I think that's his only option. Yep. To really stay in this game, getting those those buff shadow reapers. Mm -hmm. And they both have ambush this turn, so that the skeleton next turn mm. could attack because I think Stoltz is definitely gonna go for face. He's got a shadow reaper of his own and a skull beast. Yep. Shadow Reaper is going to, I mean, every time he trades, right, it's not in the favor of Stoles, just in right. the sense that the Shadow Reapers are two times e as effective for Nor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of board control on Stoles' side. Yeah. Yeah, Noir is really going to need um, an absolutely stellar Cerberus or a, maybe a Catacomb next turn as well. So it could be the Catacomb drop. I, <laughs> I would say the Cerberus drop is... is more stellar. If you can get away with it, maybe the Bone Chimera is going to provide you so much opportunity to ramp up your Shadow Reapers, but mm -hmm. it's you're running out of time really quickly here. Yep. Yeah, this match definitely has a very fast pace to it. This is going to be over Death's very Breath quickly. is definitely an option, too, if things get real bad mm -hmm. for Stoles to just kind of put a hold on it and try to make sure he has the options to deal with the Shadow Reapers. Right. A zombie party, definitely kind of a, a tricky play. It's not going to be able to take out the Evolved Skull Beast. And you want to keep the Reapers alive for as long as possible, so... It's a, it's a real difficult choice. Real difficult. He play. could leave the three damage from the Skull Beast up, mm -hmm. but as he eliminates the Dark Conjurer, and the other Skull Beast, mm -hmm. that's gonna buff two for the Shadow Reaper, giving him seven face damage. There, he can evolve to make it nine. Mm. Not quite in reach of. Uh, he doesn't quite have the play points for Hector. Which right. would close out the game. Yeah. The top deck would be really important. Yeah, it could be a Cerberus that comes out from Stoltz, and that would be just another massive chunk of damage, another piece of the puzzle. You could opt to throw the Shadow Reapers in. Right. But that's what are you hiding inside? Okay, so he might he might choose to do so. Mm -hmm. Maybe sh evolve the catacomb as well. A shame that uh, with this evolved catacomb it's not gonna be able it could clear off a follower, but then it won't die itself. And if it if you evolve to destroy it into the skull beast, it's not gonna kill off the skull beast. 
I, if the Skull Beast has the last word, he could actually swing lethal here because of the skeletons that it summons. And I think that might be it. Three, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, with the Northrus as and well. The that's that's absolutely game. Yep. Here comes the Northrus. And wow! Oh what my a, gosh! What an aggressive move from Stoles here. And that really just goes to show, right, you have a lot of your strong cards, mm -hmm. but you need more utility to surround it. It came up right. in the early game when Stoltz had that perfect 1-2-3 drop. Mm -hmm. He was able to take that advantage and run away with it and bring the series 2-0. Going second as well in the Shadowcraft match, mm -hmm. I think it's so important that he was able to establish early on. There were tools in hand for, uh, for Nor in the sense that he got double Catacomb, ended up with double Shadow Reaper, but just did not have that early game presence and everything matters in a Shadowcraft matchup, right? Mm -hmm. That early situation means a lot. That's right, when the game is finished, when you only have five play orbs, mm -hmm. every single play orb matters. Mm -hmm. that, it's a bit, of a bit of a cliche, everything matters, every point matters. But in this instance, it's absolutely true. Yeah. Maybe in a Dragon Graph, you can get away with, if you have 10 orbs playing Ouroboros on just one turn and you know ending there. Mm -hmm. But in this matchup, mm -hmm. definitely goes to the favor of Stoltz. So, as we take a look at the bracket, everything that Aya Senpai ever wanted is coming true here. Unlucker made it forward, Stoles made it forward, and if the trend continues, then I think Unlucker is slated to be the new champion here, uh, with Shadow Nexus representing on the day he he's the guest of the show. Stoles is looking really strong, though. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's... They were both able to finish their games 2-0. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. both have absolutely formidable decks, and they've made it through all the whole bracket mm -hmm. today taking down players one after the other so as we're moving into the finals let's take a look at unlucker's shadowcraft deck now we already saw one of unlucker's deck this is the alternate one mm. um ector hal catacomb i mean really what do you say right we've seen this deck so mm. many times time and time and time again he was able to get an absolutely perfect picture perfect victory with the phantom howl mm -hmm. be, being able to do exactly 11 damage mm -hmm. and uh and that's actually really important we've saw we've seen so many times today where being able to kind of pull into your your lethal options are, mm -hmm. are so important in these matchups now we're taking a look at stole's shadowcraft deck which is slightly different mm -hmm. um as well i feel like it, it's it, effectively it's going to be very much the same Right. right, in in the sense that you're just looking for those those similar options. The biggest thing that I can see, perhaps, is maybe the Lurching Corpse. Mm -hmm. I was able to get a really close look at at um, at Unlucker's Shadowcraft. Right, the, Lurching the Lurching Corpse, the Corpse, the Dark Conjurer as well. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit different there. So, would love to at this stage in the tournament remind you guys that because we're in the finals, there's some very special prizing for all of the top four. Um, First place is going to get 30,000 vials, a flare, and a direct invite to the playoffs. It was about to be a repeat winner before Mana Surge's Noah got knocked out by Shadow Nexus's very own uh, Unlucker. And that brings back this points thing, right, into it's a game, right? Now now we're now we're neck and neck. Right. Shadow Nexus versus Mana Surge. Of course, CPV is there, right? There's all the opportunity for CPV to take the win. Right. And then all of a sudden, they're in the running as well. Yeah, but then if Shadow Nexus takes it, that's going to be 200 points plus the other points from the mm -hmm. other Shadow Nexus players that have already been earned, and that's certainly going to propel them to be first place in the standings. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of interesting things to look at. Right. If you guys want to talk more about the Shadowverse Open and get involved on social media, make sure you go to at WatchNGE and uh, look for our Twitter account there for any kind of announcements and, and new things. Of course, the two big things, 3 p.m. tournament start time next week. That's one hour later than usual, so make sure you remember that. 3 p.m. tournament start. 5 p.m. the broadcast will start. So everything just one hour pushed over starting next week. And of course, as we mentioned when Aya Senpai was here, we will be at Momocon. So make sure you come out and meet us. Meet Aya Senpai, meet Envy Bear. Tons of fun stuff to do. We're going to have a main stage event where we play some Take Two and show off the game to the, to the attendees there and kind of share what fun Shadowverse can be. And then in the evening, 64 player tournaments daily. Definitely want to be there if you want to earn those bell ringer alarm clocks. Mm -hmm. And I think they, they look like standard, like circle, like with the, yeah. with the bells on the with top. The bells. Like yeah. Standard alarm clock. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a really neat piece of swag. I would. I 
I, I want one. I, I would definitely, fact, I'd, yeah, I definitely want one. I don't think I'd actually use it. I would replace but. the hotel alarm clock with, <laughs> with that. I mean, in a hotel, it's pretty sweet because you can have, you can have like the call wake yeah. up, which is like it feels like, feels pretty sweet when like someone's going, just want to, just want to let you know, uh, calling to wake you up, just like you asked. Oh yes, thank you. To me, the immediate response is, <laughs> yeah, just hang up the phone, <laughs> get out of my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You you say that like you have experience. I mean, I mean, yeah, of course. I've I've had like the call in alarm clocks. Yeah, yeah. You see, I always just sleep through all of that. Yeah, I am actually a living sloth. A living sloth. A living, breathing, talking sloth. You don't look like a sloth. You look like a person. I look like a human, but inside, <laughs> inside, I've actually sloth. seen a sloth in the wild. Oh yeah. Yeah. How was it, that experience? Uh, it was pretty neat. I didn't. Uh, it wasn't me that saw it. Uh -huh. one, of, one of my family members. We were in Costa Rica. Yeah. And we were walking through it, and my sister pointed up. Oh look! Look, there's a sloth. Completely camouflaged. Huh. Because it's it's fur. It grows like plants, and like yeah. bacteria grow on its fur, and it like completely blends in with like the green forest, and it's completely still, just like hanging in the woods. And as it was, we saw it like slowly move, and there was like a baby resting on its belly because it was like hanging upside <laughs> down. It was the coolest thing in the world. Huh. Yeah, I wish could have been one of you. Could have been one of your relatives. Yeah, could have been one of my, yeah. my buddies. My buddies down there from high school, you know. My sloth buddies, yeah. From sloth school. Yeah, yeah. That's why I like that. That's an anime in the making. That's, that's something why, I want uh, to see. Sloth school. <laughs> see, sloths. I like sloths, and that's the same reason why I like uh, Havencraft mirrors, because they go just about as fast as watching a sloth move. I have the same thought, but uh, uh, about Dragoncraft mirrors. Oh yeah, Dragoncraft mm -hmm. mirrors. Dragoncraft mirrors are a little more back. Havencraft mirrors, though, those are when like <clears throat> yeah, there's no followers on the board, and you've got tribunals in your hand, just like uh, yeah. you know, what, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, watching the Heavenly Aegis swing, that was pretty cool. It's kind of like I wish I could see the Deepwood Anomaly swing mm. just one time. The, the problem with the card is if you were to ever right. Okay, first of all, you're just going to lose a lot, right? But if you ever get into a situation where Deepwood Anomaly can actually win you the game, guess what happens? Someone's the guy concedes! You don't ever get to see his swing! It's so awful. Oh, man, I used Dance of Death last turn. You just summoned Deepwood Anomaly. What am I going to I just quit. Yeah. And then, like, because if, if, if I find myself in that situation, I would 100% just, like, tap out. Yeah. And just, just to, like, give them, like, the, yeah. uh, the, the middle Couldn't finger for not being able to yeah. swing for wow. face. You are emblematic of of what is worst about the internet, Sterling. Pretty much. You live your life to make other people miserable. Yeah, I'm embodied by the Kermit meme when he's just like meme, 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 <laughs> typing at the keyboard. That's, that's You me. know what? Instead, let's take a look at Unlocker, Unlucker versus Stoles, the two finalists of NG Shadowverse Open. Number five, the next invite is about to be decided here in this last best of three and no matter what happens, the points that the players earn are absolutely going to have a massive impact on the standings for which team is going to come out on top. Is it going to be CPV or Shadow Nexus? He's able to take it away. And it's going to be the Dragon versus Shadow matchup. We've seen this before. Shadow can absolutely run away with it in the game if he's got the perfect curve. He's going first, but he doesn't have a one drop and he hasn't drawn catacomb yet maybe he'll draw it on in the coming turns mm -hmm. but there still is a pretty good two drop for unlucker as well i feel like i want m bison to win you do i want m bison to win over rowan yeah i but feel that's just you know maybe not maybe something will happen that will convince me otherwise see i just don't want my football coach to win oh yeah because he was a very mean person yeah m bison is pretty mean as well oh yeah he does oh, some yeah. mean stuff definitely have that in common Group new on turn three. Mm -hmm. And there's still some ramp available for Stoltz as well with the Alia. All right. Again, we see ourselves in a situation where it's soul conversion on Illyrial. <gasps> he gets the second Shadow Reap. Mm. But again, it's a situation where you would much prefer to have something like a Skull Beast, you know, a Bone Chimera, even, and then the Catacomb, and then the Shadow Reapers, something like that. Right, and Stoltz is going to evolve the Grimnir just to get that extra two damage to face. He detects an opportunity, and for a Dragoncraft deck, typically you're wanting to ramp up and then spend your evolve in the 9-10 playpoint territory rather mm -hmm. than the 4-5 playpoint territory. But how the tables have turned, Cerberus will again live with one health. A situation we see time and time again. Time and time again. But the Alia, I mean, it's going to be able to trade into that Reaper just perfectly. Mm -hmm. 
Because uh, the Cerberus is going to stay alive. Yes. So that two damage from Reaper, definitely not the most we've seen. I'm trying to think about what's the most damage I've seen on a Reaper. And it's uh, it's definitely more than two. Yeah. It's definitely more than two. Definitely more than two. <laughs> Could be upwards of 13. Easily. Easily. Yes. But Unlucker getting Kako in his Oh, hand. the double. This was the tried and true. Double Zell. The hidden meta, the one we the never Zell saw coming. Zells. Okay. Well, it doesn't. It only gives you storm if you have yep. overflow. Yep. That's yep. important to know. Important yep. to know. I was about to I'd get excited about Zell telling Zell how to do storm. <laughs> Can you imagine uh -huh. Zells just reading books to themselves? Hanging it's out with word. it's like a book club. Yeah. It's just the worst. Them and, and Ginger and all the other word wielders. Yeah. <laughs> world no wielder. Regrets. So it's a what an alliteration that is. Word wielder. Word, word wielder. Because they're yeah, they're scholars, I guess. They they wield words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Okay, so he's just gonna pass, leave the evolved uh, shadow reaper there, which is typically a very strong move. Of course, as the ball continues to be passed back into the court of. Oh, the evolve is great. Mm -hmm. As the ball keeps getting passed back over to Stoles, the situation could get worse and worse, just in the sense that Stoles is going to get more and more uh, mm -hmm. heavy-hitting cards to play. And we right. see how difficult that can be for Shadowcraft. Yeah, he's got the Ouroboros and another Sahak Wheel in his play uh, that he's going to be able to play when this East Refill goes back to his hand. <laughs> but there is an Ector in the hand for Unlucker, possibly going to be coming out next turn. The bones embrace me. It's a big swing. And he's got he's got Unlucker's got two followers that Ector is going to be able to buff up this turn. Mm -hmm. Two followers, eight shadows as well. He can clear the board and do a massive amount of face damage. This is why Ector is such a good card. Gonna buff up the Shadow Reaper. This is a big turn. Of course, Israfil is gonna be coming in the next turn mm -hmm. uh, quite possibly. Or rather, he doesn't have an ability to ramp up to nine. No mm -hmm. That puts Ouroboros as, as the only big play unless he uses Sahak And the Reaper build. has four health. Oh, oh, he just drew Breath of the Salamander. But yeah. even then, kind of an awkward play as well. It's yeah. going to leave his board completely open. He he really has to decide, right? If he does Sahak Israfil, that's going to clear out the Skeleton and one of either the Ector or the Shattery. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah. if he does Ouroboros, that's even more awkward, right? Mm-hmm. There's just not a good fit all option. He's gonna go for the Israfil. Perhaps evolving to make sure he clears a, a little more. Hmm. Oh, he nearly lost the card actually. Time to say goodbye. Yep, trading into the actor, leaving Unlucker with just one follower on his side of the board. Again. Mm -hmm. And again we find ourselves in a situation where Shadow needs to find some way to hit faith face gets another he's gonna be able to buff up he's gonna be able to end it yeah that's gonna be game right there for unlocker that's exactly seven damage on that skeleton it's the pits for you. there it is and unlocker is gonna come out with just barely making it over inching by but what a well-played game from unlocker mm -hmm. he put himself exactly in the position he, ne he needed to be yeah I think that first Shadow Reaper was incredibly important at the hmm. time where it was placed, and it really transitioned well into the later ends of the game. We've seen so many times just today where Shadow gets really close with their early game aggression, but they slowly kind of get stalled out by self-healing, by mm -hmm. AoE clear, right. you know, blazing breath, Is Israfil, again and again, just clearing and clearing and clearing. If there was not that single skeleton on the table, you know, you would have seen a situation where we just have to draw and draw and draw until we find an opportunity to finally swing face. And by that time, maybe Dragoncraft has healed up already. Being able to close out the game at the time that Unlocker did is actually incredibly important. Absolutely. That's what gave him the victory. And if he wins this again in this Dragon Dragon Mirror matchup, he will be the Week 5 NGE champion. Or Stoltz could do the reverse sweep mm -hmm. and bring it 1-1. It's entirely possible, but now we find ourselves in a Dragoncraft mirror, and neither have really great opening hands. 
No, I think uh, if, if this was a, a Dragon on Shadow matchup, Ugh. I think the game would, would certainly be over. But both players are, are more than comfortable waiting out until they get to those later stages of the game. Unlucker, Ugh, unlucker, God. unlucker knows he, he doesn't need to play the tempo oh Zell there. <laughs> oh my God. There's been six turns what? between the two players and not a card played. Or he could play he could play Grimnir this turn if he wants to. He's thinking he's, he's he does. not. It's the gentleman's agreement. Okay, is he gonna break the pact? No way. He's gonna break it. He <laughs> broke it. He broke it. He oh broke man, it. unlucker. The mad cyclone is here. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> oh my gosh, Ayla here. Finally, there's a play that somewhat makes sense, and even then, it was just about to get to the point where it's like, Ugh. yeah, right. They basically just did a speed version of ramping. Yeah, definitely. What what a massive change of pace that we've seen from these uh, shadow, yeah. from these shadow matchups. We've seen a, a sword on sword matchup, um, which is still very fast paced. But the first time we've seen a truly late game on late game mm -hmm. battle. Gonna wipe out the LN. That puts actually uh, Stoles possibly a play point ahead. Mm -hmm. Right? There was one ramp from Unlucker through the Draconic Fervor. And now the decision is the Stoles want to further extend that situation. Mm -hmm. right. Is it really that valuable? Right? You have to think about that. Because there might be a turn seven, turn eight, turn nine play that might make more sense. Right. The healing from Draconic Fervor, it's, uh, you know, it's nice. Definitely in the later stage of the game, I think the draw is really what uh, makes the card still viable oh, wow. in the late game. When you're able to draw into those options in the early game, uh, right on turn five, um, Unlucker, he was able to get that extra play point and some draw as well. I think he's he's reluctant to play the Fervor because he might want the healing here, but mm -hmm. the play point is about to be Oh, that was a Sibyl! Oh, no. And this is tough, having the Ouroboros come down. Being a turn ahead is really important right now because if you just start trading blows, if you can't find good, a good point to play off of, mm -hmm. then you're just swapping places, kind of slapping each other in the face. Be gone. With double Ouroboros, this game could go for a very long time. Is going to ramp him up, so he's going to be able to get to point 10 first, and that's going to activate Zeus. Another mill. Right. It's, it's going to activate there. Zeus, but then Unlocker's got Bahama in his hand just to get rid of that off the board immediately. Mm -hmm. Sahazel. Is the Bahama coming down? That's some huge damage here. That's some massive damage for sure. There's 13 to the face, and the Ouroboros gets cleared out. Man, Just putting seven Stoltz points seven remaining. Help. And he's got another Zell and Ouroboros in his hand, Unlucker. Mm -hmm. Unlucker does, so that's going to be an, if if Stoltz isn't able to... to Ooh. If he plays Grimnir, this game is over. Or Bahamut as well. My oh he my gosh. Grimnir. So the, Zell, the Evolved Zell is going to be able to trade into the Grimnir. Unlucker? Oh my gosh. He's going to move on. I wish I could say that Unlucker... Oh no, no. He's going to have five, five defense. Uh -huh. Oh, what? Oh, the Evolve. Oh, my gosh. The Evolve was so Unlucker. key. Unlucker saw it. He, he knew it. <laughs> it was so close. Absolutely key there. If he didn't Evolve, that would have been over. Oh, no, no, no. He, it's, it, it's still going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Azel. Oh, he's got yeah. all I've got. He's got the Evolve to swing in. I didn't take the into Ouro account the, were, were clear. Yeah. the three damage. If it was the Sahabaha, it wouldn't have worked. But right. setting up the Ouroboros Storm. And Unlucker taking it to... Zero in the final Shadow Nexus. You know, I guess Senpai's got to be real happy about that. The the two turns, right, going first, and we talked about how if you get set up first in that Dragoncraft mirror mm -hmm. and you're just taking turns slapping each other, the person who goes first is oftentimes going to come out on top. Yeah. And it was really that single step ahead, but on top of that, having the two opportunities to really play that, that Zell combo was really important. And we talked about even both of them, right? The Saha Zell combo as opposed to the Ouroboros Zell combo. And both of them were demonstrated that scenario and how they were different, right? And getting damage to face in the early game on turns, you know, one through five, it doesn't even matter that much. I mean, you're, you could get to turn nine and your opponent's still on 20 health and you don't mm -hmm. care because you know with that Zell combo, you're going to get the face damage you need. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to close out the game. Let's take a look at the bracket and see who our winner of the day is. It's going to be Unlucker from Shadow Nexus, as Aya Senpai has predicted. Stoles in second place. And of course, congratulations to both Noah and Noor for making third, fourth. So... 
it looks like Unlucker's gonna go home with 30,000 red files of flare and the direct invite to the playoffs. Make sure you guys go to the website, shadowverse.ng.io to uh, figure out how you can also participate in the Shadowverse Open as well as what the schedules look like. At WatchNG is our social media plug. Make sure you go check out the Twitter for updates and, and, and news of all sorts and you can figure out what any of the uh, freshest news is like Bubblecon as well as us pushing our broadcast back. 3 p.m. tournament start next week. 5 p.m. is going to be the broadcast. Finally, make sure you enter our giveaway information in the Twitch panel. You can win 3,500 vials and build a legendary of your choice or whatever you want to do. A great uh, NGE Shadowverse Open number five here. Looking forward to number six. That's Sterling. I'm Rainy, and for us, we will look forward to seeing you next week.